Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of pins about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me, now that we've killed Ian and Alex, is, is <laughs> second up, Evgeny. <laughs> Vengeance. Okay. Okay, tone it down here. <laughs> I am Art. Wait, do I say my name or my nickname? You say your, 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 your handle. <laughs> I am Origin. See, this is why you're down lower in the priority list when, when <laughs> professionals like Ian and Alex are here. They they remember how this goes, okay? Also joining us is Marvin. Hi, I'm Paleo. And last but not least, we have Katie. I'm Aonine. Hey! And our resident uh, person not in the WOBs doing the, the WOB episode, which, <laughs> which I like this. This is oh. good. Shoto, Shoto, Shoto. Yeah, let's let's do some show and tell. Okay, so I have I I engaged in a trading mini game. What? With the Sanderson collectors. Okay. So you know you know how how when you when you're playing a game and you have to like you go you go to this person and they're like okay talk to this other person and for them to give me this thing and then you yeah. go to the other person and they're like okay well sure. go kill some ter- ten bear asses sure, 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 and sure, give sure. them. So I did that and I got. The little Spanish booklet oh. that came with the Lost Metal. Oh, cute. It's like a, a little companion guide. And the ah. reason I got this was not because I know anything about Spanish. I, th- I think I think Miss Born means Born. I think um, I might. I think I might. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it has a few like original Ben McSweeney illustrations. Oh, in it. right. This thing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That thing. And so. <laughs> I guess spoilers for Mistborn. If you oh, we're doing spoilers for all Cosmere and up, yeah, up to like, up to trust. But you know. just like heads up, sure. Uh, so here is nice. Uh, you Ruin. know the the pixely the pixelness of of your internet for whatever reason. Your your camera right. is always the most pixely, so it's it's just mm-hmm. the best. Uh, well, <laughs> that is because I don't want to reveal high HD versions of, of these images because you should play your own That's trading great. game. That's great, great, great and killer. Is, there, is it, is it really like, it seems fine. It's, well, yeah, it's fine on your end. Me. Yeah, of course it is. That's how, that's how <laughs> the video calls work. You're, you're super pixely here. Uh, you well, would have no that, way of knowing this, but like you, you're you're just the most pixely. Like even I mean, your background, it's so funny how like the argents in your background had like just blobs <laughs> for faces for a second. So it's it's good, but those are very cool if we could see them. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm surprised they like. That's cool though. Let's let's try this again. Let's, yeah, let's try stairs. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. That's cute. We got there. <laughs> we got there in the end. That's good. It, it reminds me of the they they put out Tor put out like a stormlight companion and uh, mm-hmm. let's just say it wasn't targeted to me in particular. <laughs> it was definitely oh, that for was, newer that was fans. Maris, that's that was Maris? Yeah, because Steris is on the page that says Steris. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I got I got this little thing. Nice. It's it's uh, it's snazzy. Nice. Uh, it do be in news. Be. Uh, most of the trust boxes still have not shipped because they don't have them. Uh, but yep. uh, th- for the year of Sanderson backers, you're getting the Cytoverse box soon. Uh, I believe uh, a, a lot of us on this call, uh, it, it will be arriving soon, but we don't have it, so we can't show anything off but uh so i won't spoil <laughs> mine it. yeah mine's supposed to arrive today so you know if if it shows up in the next couple of hours <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah we, we, that's true we, we we can cut it in here in the meantime i won't spoil what's in it but it, it seems like it's better than the hoid box which is good uh and, and i'll just say i've come to the conclusion that Year of Sanderson has told me I don't like surprise subscription boxes. I don't like it. Surprise is massively overrated. How fun it is! Because uh, you know what's you know what's good. 
knowing the product you're going to get and then paying for the products you want. Wow. Cool. That's consumer goodwill right there. I don't determinism. Determinism. I don't want an (laughs) algorithm to tell me what I want. I don't I don't want that. I want I want what I want and I don't want what I don't want. And uh, and I don't need music players to shuffle my music. I want to listen to the same song for three months. Okay, and that 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 part's a hot take, actually. So I I know I'm weird about that. Most people seem to like shuffle. You weirdos. I I found uh, so I I use YouTube Music most of the time yeah. instead of Spotify because uh-huh. I get no ads on YouTube Music uh, through my plan. And I found a playlist that it generated for me, I think. And I, and I don't know how, but I think it just took like all of the songs that I like and put them in there. Mm-hmm. I have never, I, 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 I don't like it. I, I hate it so much. I want to <laughs> listen to the playlist I create. And this is why I don't experience new music, because I just don't want to do that and listen to new music. I want to listen to the music I already like. It's like when you go to a restaurant and you just order the same thing because, you know, it's good. And then you don't need to experiment with anything else because you found something that's good. See, that's valid. That yeah. I agree with. Yeah. I know what I want. Yeah. Anyway, the side of first box is better. So that's good. But uh, <laughs> I think I don't like the way of King's Kickstarter. You knew what you were going to get. Whereas like the con swag <laughs> bundle, they're like, I don't know. You'll, you'll see later you can pre-order it now i'm like i don't like this like tell me what's in the things before you ask for money that'd be great thanks yeah i like that yeah i agree let's talk about wobs yeah. let's talk about wobs <laughs> what are we doing we are doing more wobs uh when will we do a non-wob topic i don't know guys we so well, eventually so we're, ju- we're just gonna project two we're, we're just gonna do yeah well yeah uh speaking of we are not going to have an episode two weeks from now uh this is important because uh the next episode would come out march 25th and 26th and uh slight slight issue uh uh, i'm getting married on the 24th and literally everyone on this call and probably (laughs) most people who you've ever seen on the show are all going to be there, which is very cool. But so I'm we're skipping a week. Uh, you'll you'll get a thing like around the April second, and then we'll go into. Uh, I almost said the name Secret Project Two. Hey, there we go. So that that's, maybe that's we can do like a like a big group selfie at the wedding. That's reception. exactly my plan, Evgeny. Wow, good job. And, Great and we'll post that on a thirty and a half hour video, and it's just that one photo. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Maybe, so maybe, maybe we can get it like every slight. face. We maybe we <laughs> no, need an AI even, animated even. or something. Nice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, easy. Just like see where where the AI takes us. Is that a thing? That's probably a thing. Uh, maybe I'll answer some of the True. things in my spam box about like what AI crap is here this week. Wow. Let's talk about wobs. Let's go to wob mode. We got stuff to do. We have just so many pages of wobs. Evgeny, take us in. Window Runner. Mm-hmm. That's a familiar name. Sure is. He's really cool. Cool. Sure. Uh, but anyway, so uh, so Window Runner asks about the Sleepless. They're not from Rashar. Do they have a single point, a single origin point in the Cosmere? And if so, have we seen it? To which Brandon says that they do have a single origin point in the Cosmere, but we have not seen it. That origin point is Vax and Ati is a <laughs> is a bug all along. That's a fact. Okay, that's none a of that's take. true. I mean, it could be Vax. You don't know. It could be. Maybe yeah. it's mythos. It could be. Maybe, maybe it's mythos. Yeah. I mean, you would have many myths about the creepy bugs. You know? <laughs> or maybe it's all bugs. Mythos, all bugs. That that's that's the tourism uh, motto. Mythos, all bugs, all, bugs all the way down. All the way down. <laughs> it's just bug planet. There's no solid yeah. surface. It's all yeah, bugs. They have bugs, bugs, people, <laughs> bugs. So many people are tuning out of the episode already. Bugs bunnies are there. As well. Bugs yeah, bunny. I was, I, was, I was leading. I was leading nice. to. They have bugs bunnies good, in there. Good, but good, like, good. I was trying to to come up with like a middle thing I, in the I list. I yeah, want no. this episode to be just as unhinged as the last one that we did. So I think it. Well, I think we're starting good. 
Okay. Anyway, that makes no. sense that there's a single origin point, yeah. and they've multiplied and spread, and uh, maybe eventually the Cosmere will be all bugs. That's mm. the ending. It's like probably another plan where Adonasium was like, yeah, let's put bug people here. And yeah, yeah we, have a, we have a crab planet. Let's have a bug. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, you know, like all these, these standard body plans, you know, it's like, let's, let's have shark planet. Let's have that, that's a good idea, actually. Let's do that. Let's let's have an underwater planet where they're sentient sharks. That sounds amazing. Then then there's a planet of just like Brontosaurus that are sapient or something. And that's that's True. that's the cosmic I mean, world that we have. If 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 that's... Brandon is going to canonize farthing jellyfish, then wait, what? True. Is that a thing? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. And it's so when, when in, in trust. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, was it pancakes? Sure. Yeah, I don't think it was that, jellyfish. I, that doesn't make it any better. I'm I'm just, I mean, I'm not question. trying to make it better. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we haven't seen the sapient Adenalcium created uh, Brontosaurus because they can't fit through the perpendicularities, so they're just that's, too big. That's valid. Yeah. 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 Nice. Waiting for like space age. The space whales, though, sure. are going through yeah. the Cosmere, though. Well, because they were created in space. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Let's go to the next one. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going great already, guys. <laughs> and quality content people can expect from this channel. Yeah, you know, the, the, the most commenters were okay with the last episode. Some yeah. were like, this yeah. is a little too unhinged. It's like, that's, I, that's it, fair. It may have been a little too unhinged. It may be. Well, so, well let's, let's steer off the rails. Continue, yeah. Marvin. The next one is by an anonymous questioner. They ask, um, are all of the unmade native to Russia? Josh Brennan says, yes, they are. Uh, uh, yes, I'm going to say the unmade all count as being native to Russia. Yeah. Oh, so we talked We talked about this in like the Aether one when we talked about uh, Ray Shafir. Oh, the Midnight Mother. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, with the Midnight Essence. So it's not... What does it mean to be native <laughs> yeah. to, to Roshar? Like, I mean, I could imagine that it could mean... I could imagine that it could mean whatever they were before they were unmade as native to it, or them being unmade. Yeah, they, were they were unmade created on, on they, yeah, they mm -hmm. were created on Roshar, and so, or uncreated, yeah. or whatever. I think the most sensible interpretation is that they were things that were already on Roshar, yeah. and not yeah. transplants from somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, can accept Ashenites as well. Oh, yeah, yeah anywhere in the Roshar I mean, system, I think that would be yeah. fair. <laughs> Yeah. That's the nice thing about ambiguous names for the yeah. like, the system. The, the Cosmere are yeah, 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 yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you not agree, Katie, with that? I do actually think Brandon's phrasing to me uh, kind of makes me like it leads me to think that he means that's true. Uh, that's fair. Unmade. Like uh, I'm gonna say they all count there. I I don't know what his um tone of I don't remember what his tone of voice was when he was saying that mm -hmm. but that's what that kind of would lead me to think it definitely has the vibe of Brandon telling me technically all 16 shards <laughs> have invested true. on Roshar it's like thanks Brandon that's that's really helpful so it does it does have that vibe look I I would still love if Ray Shafir was like some corrupted midnight aether I think that'd be sweet mm -hmm. yeah oh, that's that's tricky I, I want to know about the origin of the unmade. We got to We got to learn. And I know Brandon knows that we need to learn about this eventually. Like who they are, where they came from, where will they go? Cotton Eye Joe. I feel like we need to answer it's some late. of this at least with dealing with Bardemishram. Like, yeah. 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 Like I think, I think maybe, maybe the first one that we'll see, mm -hmm. uh, like, by Demetrian being like maybe some spread of Roshar. I think that is very reasonable to happen in book five for sure. Yeah. Yeah. True. Questioner asks, if you were transported in the Cosmere in any contemporary period of the books, with the exception of Six of the Dusk, with the goal of reuniting at Onelsium, how long would it take you? Days, weeks, years? And Brandon says, centuries, if it's even possible, which I won't confirm anyway. The questioner says, even with all of your knowledge? And Brandon goes, yeah, probably. Even if it were possible, if you're going to go into Stormlight Era, there are planets you're going to have to get to with no perpendicularities. How are you going to do that? Depends. It's possible, but... Oh, so maybe... Maybe what he's saying here is that if you were in, like, Mistborn Era 4 and you had FTL, then you'd be fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Possibly. This... Yeah, I, 
I don't know why people weren't freaking out as, as much about this as I thought people would freak out. Oh, yeah. Because to me, this is an almost explicit confirmation that Aiden Elzium can be restored. Like, yes, a couple of times he hedges on even if it were possible, but like he instantly says, oh, it's going to take me centuries. And then he's like, well, there are prerequisites to doing this. There are prerequisites to doing this, which are visiting planets that don't have purpose. Like the way I read this, he knows exactly what is required to reform Adonalsium. And then he's just like, if it's even possible. Uh, I would generally agree with that. I think there might be like parties in the Cosmere that try to achieve this. And like Ren has this in his, like, it, it doesn't mean that it that Anderson can be reformed, just that what people are maybe trying already to do in the Cosmere to work towards this goal would take them centuries to achieve. And like he knows, that, like, I wouldn't take it as confirmation either way because like, if Brandon obviously has thought about it, but it doesn't mean that um, it will work. Like you can maybe get halfway there, I guess. I don't know. Like Shh. you can get something like Adonalsium out of it, but it won't be really like reforming the original somehow. Brandon often does this where he takes the premise of the questioner at face value, regardless <laughs> of whether that is true or not. Like that yeah. is definitely a thing that he does, right? Um, and so I think he's just doing that in this respect. Like, I feel like even in world, there are people who probably f have hypothesized about this and are mm -hmm. like, OK. You at least need these five things. It might not be sufficient, but you necessarily need mm -hmm. these five things. And that alone could be really hard and need you to go to all these places. Right. Yeah. I can kind of see that. I, I am, I am not swayed. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we eventually reform Aiden Alcium yeah. in some form. Like that, that's, and like Hoyd reforms Aiden Alcium. Like that, that's not even like a reveal if that was true, right? Like because uh, I think <laughs> yeah. that's just so common so, of some, a theory, right? Sometimes the the writing on the wall is it just yeah. points to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So interesting, though. Uh, it, I think the other thing that's interesting is that worlds without perpendicularities would be necessary to do this, right? Which, yeah. like, that means, like, not, like, main shard worlds, right? So, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Although, I suppose, like, something like Threnody, right? Where it's like, okay, there's weird crap that happened and the death and, like, that counts. But clearly, there's more than one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I mean, you, can, you can definitely read this as you like you have to collect invest like you have to be connected to all the shards or whatever right sure. which is which is what hoyt seems to be doing and there are you know the only ways to access some of these shards which have been splintered is to go to plant to places where no stable perpendicularities exist yeah this next one for one of the unmade to be classified as odium's unmade there's classifications of unmade okay must it have been made by another shard first or before it became unmade? Brandon, excellent question. Raffo, we're going to delve into the unmade quite a bit in coming books. So I'm raffoing this right now. Well, perfect. That's going off right what we were talking about before, yep. which is yep. good. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that makes sense. Like, I think Oathbringer was setting up. It's like, hey, the unmade are here. They're important. Uh we're not going to get them necessarily in every book, but I always felt like Rhythm of War was deliberately not doing unmade stuff. So book five could do a lot more. Right. Like, I always thought that that's structurally what was happening. We'll probably get a lot more in the back half as well. Yeah. Well, this made me wonder was. Whether it is possible and whether that has already happened for other shards to have their own unmade. Like, is that. Like, is this is this similar to autonomy avatars type of situation where it is it is possible for any shard to make this, but it's kind of Odium's signature move or whether this is something that is unique to the Rosharan system and Odium's presence in there and so on? 
we don't know many of the details on how unmade are formed. I see no reason why something like what Raboniel was doing to to the sibling yep. couldn't happen with mm-hmm. some other sapient investiture that like just like invention comes and like I'm pumping invention stuff into you and that critically <laughs> changes uh, that like yeah. there's probably more going on there right but I don't see any reason why that shouldn't work somewhat similarly yeah pretty much it, it probably helps that uh, on Roshar that there are these big very powerful sapient spren where you'd want to do that <laughs> yeah. yeah so probably not a whole lot of value in like unmaking a wind spren no let's uh you guys you guys like bones let's talk about bones maybe you do i am the bone lord not to be confused with the bone queen lotus on discord no yeah. no <laughs> or or the boner lord who is Great. A third entity altogether. <laughs> cool. Or no. a boner, who was a character who never made it into the Stormlight books. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, do people even know what that joke yeah. meant? Peter, getting, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if they know, but Peter has talked about it in, yeah. in, on Reddit. Yeah, the with a bono. The Spanish name for Raboniel. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. She, she, before that, like even before the Spanish translation, she was called a bono. Oh, right, 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 yeah, right, yeah. right. She was called a bono. Yeah. yeah. But all, there's also a Rab- Rabo thing in the Spanish translation, which means yeah, like, which is separate. Dick. Yeah, yeah. That nice. is different. Nice. Yeah. Cool. You know, so, uh, look. Sometimes when we're doing nonsense. That's just us being silly. Sometimes this is actually referring to something that actually means something. <laughs> we should explain that to the audience. Yeah. I know explaining the joke isn't funny, but now you know no. you learned something today. Uh, speaking of knowing more, the next question asks about the monks of the core who are known to follow the order of bone. In addition to that, we have Teft leading down the new bridge cruise into the chasms where there are skeletons of bones. <laughs> really odd turn of phrase. <laughs> I was just thinking that. It's like, I mean, and, yeah, and that's says, typically what they're made out of. Yeah, for and, sure. And he says, <laughs> look around you. Uh, this is why we are known as the Order of Bone. Is there any sort of connection there? Uh, and Brandon says, not a big one. Uh, that's more a reference there for people who eventually read Dragonsteel Prime, where that was a big thing I called Bridge Four. Like it's a nickname for Bridge Four. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, but I decided to not use that title for Bridge Four very much. It's partially an in joke for my team. It's not meant to be a reference to the Decor Monks. Look, we're. We're finally going to get to read Dragon Seal Prime when the Words of Radiance Kickstarter happens. Yep. And that's yep. going to be it very might, cool. It might happen this year. It might happen, might like happen this year. Too. Maybe. Maybe. They, they do seem mm-hmm. to be a little stressed with the year of Sanderson. So I wouldn't be surprised if it comes a little later, to be honest, than even fall. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah. But I think one thing we do know is Tamakex are bones. And that, that's, that's about it. Bone so. phones. Bone phones. Thing that is known. <laughs> yeah. I totally forgot this. So this makes it sound like the Dakor thing is not really related to the um, Bridge 4 thing. It, and it's just a Bridge 4 no. thing relating to Dragonsteel Prime. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just makes sense that, like, if you are a monastery dedicated to manipulating <laughs> your bones into horrific structures. Then you're the Order of the Bone, yeah. Order of the Bone, that's, yeah. like, a natural name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I wonder if the yeah. monastery is called, like, the Bone Home. <laughs> You know, maybe maybe that's what uh, the Elantrians call it, actually. <laughs> the Bone Home. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's, that's the title for this episode. <laughs> the, bone- the Bone Home. <laughs> the Home of Boning. Listen to the tone of bone. The tone, the true tone of bone. The true tone of bone. Woo! Okay, uh, okay. next question. <laughs> yes. So we have another question relating to Odium. 
Um, so the question asks, Odium has a history of breaking shards. In order to do that, it feels like he must have something this, that gives him an edge over the other shards. I'm curious if Odium, in that like Terrangian as, Odi as Odium, possesses anything further than the Shard of Adenatium. And Brandon answered that he does not have anything more than Odium, but he does have an edge. A uh, question followed up with, like a Dawn Shard? Not a Dawn Shard, no. If he had a Dawn Shard, that would be very, very bad. Makes a lot of sense, yeah. Well, that that's terrifying. Uh, shard having a dawn shard. That's 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 not a fun thought. Yep. Yeah. It's honestly a miracle that uh, shards haven't found dawn shards more. You know. It kind of is, isn't it? Right. Although I think there is an implication that maybe honor had some measure of access. To, yeah. to a dawn shard, like because yeah. if you think back of the uh, the visions that he was sending mm -hmm. Dalinar back in the way of kings, yeah, uh, he was like, oh, and like they're talking about uh, dealing with Odium, and and Tenebas was like, oh, and without the dawn shards, you were Plural. stuck with going the the duo the the duo of champions route. Yeah, okay. It does always make me wonder what edge like Odium had, yeah. you know. It makes me wonder if it's something like uh, a skill or just more experience doing yeah. it rather than like something, some specific power or weapon that he has. And so it's and so that's carried over since we know some of the shards memories carry over. And so that's why Teravangian has the same kind of slight edge because he has those experiences from Rays. Maybe Teravangian specifically might have an edge holding Odium because he might also like maybe something of his boon and curse situation carried over with the um mm. with his ascension. Oh, it could like, be. We, we do have uh, had a question some time ago, like whether it has any sort of implications for his ascension, which I think was Rafford or yeah, like at least like, we'll find out. So um maybe that does play a role, but I also think like just Terrangian is in general, very terrifying holding sure. audience. <laughs> so sure. like, you know. I could see it being, uh, you, you made me think of Paleo, that it could be him being so suited for Odium, whereas some other vessels might not have been as, as suited for their shards. So it could also be that, like, whatever method, if it's kind of like how uh, Vin and Ruin, was, did Vin splint her Ruin at the end? Or did she, no, no she didn't. No, no, she didn't splinter him. But if it's kind of in the same veins of just like smashing two shards together until something happens, then it might help that he is so suited for his for his shard and like more attached to it. I don't know. That's a thought. I have a few thoughts. So thought one, Brandon saying he does not have anything more than Odium, but he does have an edge. It is unclear whether Brandon is referring to Teravangian as Odium yeah. versus race. Like, I think you could Turn interpret the way this question is like uh, it yeah. feels like he must have something that gives him an edge over uh, other mm -hmm. shards. And Brandon could be kind of responding to that. Uh, so like, I don't know if we can necessarily can glean that Teravangian has races memories. Like you do get the memory of what the power did. So like you do kind of get that right. Um, so that's one aspect. A second aspect is I don't think that Odium is doing the same strategy that Vin did on Ruin, because Race wouldn't want to die. Neither would Teravangian, right? <laughs> uh, so no, for sure. I think uh, this is a more subtle thing. I want. I wonder if it's kind of like what we were talking about on the last episode about like exploiting like flaws and oaths or something that like Odium has found some way of doing that, or he's particularly like. Maybe he didn't enter into certain agreements that maybe others did or something and taking advantage of that somehow. Like, I think it's probably a like maybe a subtle flaw that he's exploiting somehow. That's not just like a raw power thing. Right. Because I I don't think it could be a raw power thing. Right. Like, it just doesn't make sense no. that he could go to sell yeah, and, no. yeah. and break two shards like there there, there was some cleverness and. Uh, like, maybe other shards could do it if they didn't swear certain oaths, right? But maybe Odium and didn't. I, 
I also don't think that the VIN80 approach would work for like any other pair of shards. That's probably mm-hmm. true. Ones, yeah. that, I think, ones that weren't so opposed. Yeah. 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 True. Yeah. Because the problem there was their powers were so, so opposed that just touching each other was yeah. uh, destructive. So Preservation gave up some of his power to create people, so Ruin had more power. And Brandon goes, an edge, you might say. Oh. And the questioner says, Sazig took both, and I'm curious if Ruin still has power over Preservation. And Brandon says, it is currently theorized on planet that Ruin does. I mean, and this is this was right before Lost Metal came out, and so yes. I think that's very explicit with Lost Metal, right? That, yeah. Like, there's... Mm-hmm. Ruin's always stronger. In this case, it is clear that an edge refers to just amount of, of investiture mm-hmm. that is available to the shard. Uh, not the, the same thing edge. as the edge as the previous one. Well, not maybe, well, maybe, necessarily. Well, maybe, like, yeah, it's I guess possible maybe. that Odium has more investiture for some reason, right? No, they maybe the, all the shards started at the same power, but started. Yes. Started, yeah. Yeah. But maybe he uh, hasn't invested as much, so he has like a little bit more. Yeah. He hasn't invested as much. He has co-opted other. Oh shards yeah. Invest- okay. Like, sure. He's, maybe his edge is he's done something to become stronger. Okay. Yeah. Sure. 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 But not like an extra um, shard. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Like five percent or whatever. Or or it could be like Odium's edge could be a completely separate thing. Or mm-hmm. Odium itself might not have an edge, but Teravangian might have one over raise possibly so possibly yeah but at least that one very explicit in lost metal i would say yes. <laughs> cool uh this next one is paraphrased by karen yeah so what was happening is uh karen was on a one of the booths of like the the dragon steel people and she was standing there answering questions oh right and, like you could go up to her and ask her like a wiki question or a timeline or a continuity mm. question and she would sometimes answer uh and give you a a kafo card ah. <laughs> for karen and find out nice oh nice easy nice yeah nice <laughs> it was in my wallet <laughs> there you go <laughs> Uh, And so she says, the basic form that Parchment awakened to after the Everstorm, which is not work form, doesn't have a canonical name yet and is referred to in the wiki as Awakened Parchment Basic Form. Rolls off the tongue. And that's not a capital awakened. (laughs) No, it's not. No, no, This is unfortunately the kinds of things that we have to to clarify. (laughs) I think I think I remember Karen being like, capitalization can be just so hard because, you know, in another universe, it could be capital A awakening, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's good to know. It's not work form. It's not one of those. Uh, I mean, it couldn't be work form, right? Uh, it's also can- not dial form. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Like this is clearly saying it's not any of yeah. those. Yeah. Right. Which is. Yeah. Very interesting. Really. What form did do singer children start at oh i think that's some other weird stuff like that that's a weird specific thing. right i was i was wondering yeah. if the same thing right because mm. because i don't think children mm. they're not dough forms they're certainly no, they're not, not like worker or, or, or anything else yeah obviously no. they're not like slave form no no no, no, no. It's, it's like a special form okay singer children are born in dull form Though for them, it's more vibrant and less cloudy, a property uh, it loses as the singer ages. Oh, the interesting. listeners okay. call this subtype of dull form child form. Oh, child form. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a real form. So it yeah, it's it's the lack it's, of form, right? Yeah. I mean, it is very interesting. This basic form like. It's probably a fairly unique happenstance with the Everstorm restoring all these things rather than like a base thing that regular singers could do all the time, right? Like, I feel like if those basic singers took on a new form, they could not get back into this basic (laughs) form, right? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe maybe that specific singer could, but maybe not. They're like their children, maybe. Yeah. It's like it's just a yeah. such a weird spiritual thing that yeah, happened so the, to them, the right? Question, yeah, the question there is, so they are in some form, right? 
And the question is, is there, like, are they bonded to anything at that? Is there a spren or a piece of investiture in their gem heart? Because child form probably doesn't, right? Child form is the lack of form. Doe form is the lack of a form. The, the parchment or, or slave form, quote unquote, is also lack of a form, but there something is missing. Not only, not only is there nothing in the gem heart, but in addition to that, something is missing. And so if you just put that something back, I would expect them to go back to, to do form, to no form. Mm-hmm. But these awakened parchment are not like as, well, they don't appear to be mentally impaired at all in the way that do, the do form is for adults. Yeah. So if anything, I would say they are closer to like child form where oh. they're not bonded to anything, but sure. they also haven't lost kind of the, the vibrancy of. Ooh, okay. I like that. That's good. Like, like it's like the ever storm, like gave them that vibrance back and like they had, it yes. hasn't had, it hasn't like decayed away mm-hmm. or something. Yes. And like maybe and so it would maybe, eventually. Right. Yeah. Maybe if they stay in this form yeah. for like 10 20 okay. years, they will turn into dough forms. Okay. Okay. That's probably my fave about that. That, that, that actually makes sense. But like, I don't think there's like a spread. Necess- I don't think there is. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it, so. Either. It would feel weird. I mean, I'm sure like, Brandon can probably invent some kind of like a minor spren that that gives them essentially doe form plus. <laughs> but that 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 feels no, no, no. I, I I like this idea that they're basically like in some Jimmy weird Bob thing anyway. like child form. Like, it, it's not child yeah. form because normal singers wouldn't be born into it this way. But like. <laughs> And really, ch- child form is doe form, right? It is the yeah. same form. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. just doe form when it hasn't dulled yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, I, I think it's like a, a a thing that's just like enough time, and then it, it just like wanes. And so, I think eventually that would wane, and they would just be doe form. And I think that probably makes the most sense that you've gotten yeah. this influx of investiture a little bit, and so you get that vibrancy. I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But they have they haven't waned yet. They're still waxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Yep. I think we nailed that, guys. Nailed it. <laughs> Boom. After Speaking nailing some parchment, <laughs> let's go uh, on to a happy subject. Let's let's talk about eternal death. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Vida. Uh, and this is a little bit paraphrased, but I think the uh both the question and the answer are clear enough that there isn't much wiggle room yeah uh envita asked uh whether fendurana so was obliterated when when moash stabbed her with the anti-storm light and brandon says uh uh brandon said that the soul of fendurana wasn't obliterated was was not obliterated and could have reached the beyond, but also, but Brandon also added that nothing can be obliterated in the Cosmere. Things can be changed, but not destroyed. Which is something that we knew, right? That you can't like permanently destroy anything. It all just goes back into the system. I think we knew that. Sure, but like, couldn't you take someone's soul stuff and like shred it in such a way that like it couldn't go to the beyond it makes it seem like soul stuff whatever does go to the beyond is like a little bit more than that that like even if you Mm -hmm. did that like you'd still like pass into whatever cosmere afterlife there is Uh, right maybe to some extent like if you want to like keep it within the system it could be like the the soul in the whatever spiritual realm or whatever is somehow atomic in some way. So like, like, I don't know how the spirit web or whatever works and how much it represents yeah. your soul and whatever, but like that there's always some piece left that is like, that is your soul and that you can't destroy for some. Like, sure, 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 sure. 
you just maybe because couldn't of have it. shenanigans. Yeah, you couldn't like remake it again in uh the physical realm, right? Like yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, yeah. but like, so, like yeah. I feel like so, there has to have been some shenanigans like that. We I know this doesn't feel complicated to me. No, <laughs> let's talk about the spiritual mumbo jumbo mechanics of this. Because, <laughs> uh, like, what, is, know, what is a soul? What is a soul in the Cosmere? What does that mean? We know that victims of hemallergy show up in the cognitive realm kind of deformed and missing mm, bits of themselves. Sure, sure. Uh, which, granted, that is the cognitive realm, so sure. it's still possible that uh, their soul is fully intact. But I don't think that's the case. I think if you steal something from someone via hemallergy or other similar arcane arts, you are taking a piece of their spirit web. And, and when I think of a, like, I think soul and spirit web, when we are talking about like the mechanics of the Cosmere are interchangeable, right? This is not touching on kind of the, I can't even say the spiritual idea of a soul because... <laughs> The, the metaphysical, yeah, right. yeah, the, yeah. Like the cognitive yeah. idea of a mind. It's like, ah, yes, <laughs> yes, of course, <laughs> yes, um, of course. Uh, but like, I, I think so. When you steal something from someone's spirit web, you you have taken that piece of their yeah. soul with you. And so, if you are storing that in a spike, or if you are transforming that investiture in some way, I can't think off the top of my head how you transform investiture, but like. Maybe you you consume that and then you awaken something. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I think there is the option that you can keep a soul from going into the beyond. I don't think you can, or, or, or at least for a while, right? Uh, eventually, sure. maybe someone is going to use that investiture or that investiture is going to decay from the spike or whatever, and it is going to make its way there. But it's possible that by that time, it is no longer a soul, right? It's just investiture that is not oh, associated okay. with anything. Mm -hmm. right? that's, that's the difference, because the thing that's going to the beyond isn't investiture. Right, because the the net investiture of the Cosmere should stay the same, right? Right. So there is in the Cosmere, there <laughs> is something extra of souls, which, mm -hmm. uh, like, it, so I, I what I was thinking about is like, this this is very philosophical. It's like, do humans have an extra spark of stuff? Yeah. Or are we just like, is it just brain chemistry, right? And like, in the Cosmere corollary of that is like. Is it all just investiture, spiritual stuff that like, yeah, there, there is something extra in the Cosmere. It's investiture and stuff. But investiture, investiture can't be created or destroyed, right? So the whatever investiture stuff that makes up your soul that you'd see in the cognitive realm or spiritual realm even or any of the realms... That's not the same as your soul when you finally pass in the beyond. Because that I think that investiture still goes back into the Cosmere, right? I mean, yeah. does Brandon does Brandon count the beyond as being outside of the Cosmere? I mean, that's a that's a good question. I don't think yeah. he'll ever actually say that for sure. That's that's a yeah, good point. Yeah, because he doesn't want to confirm things about the beyonds, but I mean I mean, I yeah. I think that would be I think if you want conservation of investiture, then it has to be uh, like, then you, 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 you can't, you can't do it any other way. Cause like if you had, oh yeah, you know, matter mass is conserved, except for that part when you die, that just goes somewhere <laughs> else. It's like, okay, then, then it's and, not conserved, obviously. Right. Uh, and it could also be like, uh, it's like very technical, but like the, the beyond, like if it's not somehow part of this investiture cycle that it like it makes a copy of your soul and then the investiture that is your soul gets recycled. Oh, like, no, it's gonna it's gonna no, it's gonna be like some like in, instead of a cognitive shadow, which is like an imprint of your soul, but not necessarily your soul, it's like a fossil of your soul, right? Like in the beyond, it's like your actual soul, right? Like I think that's what Brandon yeah. I think that is the intent of what Brandon wants it to mm -hmm. be, right? Yeah. That like I, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think there are two, two models under this question can work. <laughs> and, and one of them is 
the beyond doesn't exist. It is just non-existent. There's no afterlife. Mm, nice. Classic. And then like going into the beyond is like, there's, there's nothing to go to, right? Your, you know, your, your physical body is decaying. Your cognitive uh, aspect is being destroyed. Your spiritual aspect is returning back to the spiritual realm or whatever. And that's it. There's no extra stuff. It is, you are physical matter and you are investiture and sure. that's it. Yep. And then the other model is, all of all of the, your physical body is still your physical body. Your cognitive and spiritual aspects are still made of investiture, but there is that extra spark in addition to all of yeah. that, mm-hmm. which is your soul, which is your you, and that is not made of investiture. That is special soul stuff, right? And then that that is immune probably to like all of these hemorrhagic shenanigans and anti-investiture stuff. And so on. God, that's and it's so can... weird to me if that that's the case in the Cosmere. <laughs> that's so bizarre. Yeah. Isn't the whole reason we're making a fantasy cosmology to like solidify <laughs> what souls are and stuff? But it's like, no, then we have these three aspects, and then also the extra stuff on top of that. It's like, why but are we it, doing any of this? Then? It's the other, it's know. the soul, and then it's the other soul. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Um, I, I, I kind of dig the, uh, yeah, there is no beyond. It doesn't exist. You, 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 you just, just ripped apart. There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the, it's the whole like Kaladin's vision, like Dalinar's visions that he sends to Kaladin, like with Tien and like the warmth that mm. he senses and so mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that the beyond? Maybe. Is it the spiritual realm? Maybe. It's, it's the entire premise of yeah. in the Cosmere, your answer to whether there is yeah, more sure. there is an afterlife is your answer is your answer. There's no like, that. That's it. <laughs> right. Because I suppose the yeah. beyond in this case could just be your rip. Yeah, you, you just cease to exist. Could be. Yeah. And maybe bring this slightly to, uh, back to a slightly less philosophical level. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> uh, and regarding Fenerana specifically, because okay. she was killed through anti-investiture. Yeah. So like what exactly does this entity react with like is it sh- like what, what is annihil- what is it annihilating does it actually get through to the spiritual aspect or is it like just uh, because yeah. physically and cognitive get mixed up with friends so like when yeah. they are yeah. um, that manifested so maybe it's just that aspect and the spiritual was perfectly fine and you it's can't that. really touch that and so <sighs> like <laughs> this is some deep yeah. cosmic philosophy is what, what is the soul <laughs> what is the soul here <laughs> Because I think it would make sense, like that the anti investiture itself, first of all, only reacts with like if you do it in the spirit in the physical realm, it first the interacts with physical stuff. And because spren are cognitive things basically pulled into the physical realm, it also kills the uh, cognitive aspect, but the spiritual might be. But investiture is usually spiritual though, right? Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> Isn't it? true yeah but yeah i I don't know i didn't expect us to talk this much about this question i thought it was like yeah this is a quick one but it's like what if we talk about what is a soul what is a soul in the real world and how does it work in the cosmere and how what's what's the afterlife in the cosmere it's like oh okay that's 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 what you want the dangers of paraphrased questions yes well i mean i think if it was this was exactly as stated i think we'd go on the same direction mm, true. so next question this comes from fluffy and is uh, paraphrased again when the five scholars traveled to rosha this happened post recreants so most shard blades would have been dead how did night blood gain sapiens to which Brandon answered shard blades weren't the only blades around that were active there were honor blades honor blades are self-aware but what? do not manifest the spread in the cognitive realm which what <laughs> I, I remember okay. when this one came out of like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> is this a misspeak here? I, I don't think that this is a, uh, like doesn't seem like it. Is this an Oathbringer is an honor blade type thing <laughs> here? No, I don't that think does so. happen sometimes. Yeah, I, like, I, I think yeah. the combination of, you know, honor blades are are self-aware, but do not manifest. Like, I think. You can misspeak one of these two, but not. Yeah, both. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's comparing and contrasting, not just going on autopilot yes. here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Wow. That's a. Uh... Well, clearly you can't talk to your honor blade, but maybe if you're a herald, you can. Maybe but you can't talk to your honor blade. You just can't expect it to talk back. <laughs> well, okay. That's that's, that's a valid uh, point. I mean, in I, the spiritual realm, it calls cut. 
it talks back you know i that that really drives a parallel between nightblood and the other blades doesn't it because nightblood yeah. also probably yeah. doesn't manifest a spread nightblood no, cannot no. be dismissed or some oh well, i guess the other blades can be dismissed or someone so that's well because like vivenna's blade doesn't like it is just the same blade in yeah in there right like in the cognitive realm like it's mm-hmm. not yeah. yeah it's not like a regular shard blade that is in a different form there i it's weird that honestly that is pretty crazy because it's like we've <laughs> had characters hold honor blades in their viewpoints like many times actually it's like oh okay (laughs) cool it it might explain to some extent why like hoyt was uh, not not hoyt Thess was so ready to like call nightblood sword nimi because like maybe he has interacted with a blade before that would be crazy but like why wouldn't he end you know yeah you know what i'm reminded of oh no I'm reminded of the like the 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 voices and the screams that Zeth yeah. hears, mm-hmm. okay, and the fact that they're not just yeah, it's not just nothing. Yeah, like yeah, there is so there, there is there a, is something a, going on there. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's so wild. <laughs> Honor blades are self aware. I guess so. I guess this is paraphrased. So yeah, that's yeah. true. So there is perhaps a little bit of room for shenanigans. But I would expect most of this to be fairly act like. It's wild. Fluffy it's wouldn't wild. lead us astray here. Fluffy wouldn't lead us astray. No, yeah, I, I, yeah. Someone called Fluffy. I would, I would yeah, trust fluffy. Their, their integrity. My cats are Although, fluffy. I trust them implicitly, their, except eating my feet. Their, their three heads might be in like leading in different true, directions. So. True. <laughs> true. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I mean, investiture is self-aware, right? It, it can, or yeah, rather, it can yeah. become self-aware. It can right? become self-aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's not inherently self-aware. So, but like, why wouldn't Seth have heard the blade? Like, I, I think it needs to be some garbage. Like, <laughs> it's y- your herald as that holding the blade. You, you like can talk mm-hmm. to it somehow. But like, how would then the five scholars know about that? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I could see it just being that, like, they're self-aware, but they ca- that doesn't mean that they can communicate in any way. Or they can communicate, but you do need that connection that the Heralds have with their own blades. Yeah, but, like, isn't the whole point with the, the Five Scholars is that they went to Roshar and they're modeling Nightblood off of this, off of these so, blades. Sure. But maybe, yeah, like, so- maybe someone told them. Maybe they... I don't know, saw something in the cognitive realm. Sure. Here, here's the thought about that, because I, okay. I was thinking about this, this very same thing. We don't actually know. Like, yes, they were modeling Nightblood after either Spren Blades or Honor Blades. But we don't know what they were hoping to accomplish with true. this modeling. True. Mm-hmm. Like, very true. Um, Nightblood was given a command, destroy evil, which is very much an awakening thing. But like maybe the five scholars didn't know that shard blades are living things that can transform into like maybe they thought the shard blades are just m- weapons. Whether we're talking about spread blades or other blades, they're just weapons that grant you power and. I mean, maybe maybe that's it, right? Or maybe there was a little bit more. I don't think that's consistent with the previous swabs Brandon has said about the five scholars and Nightblood and Roshar. Has Brandon said one way or the other whether they were trying to make Nightblood sapient or sentient? Whether they knew what they were doing when... Or whether that was just a side effect of so much investiture? Uh, It's not even that much investiture, really. (laughs) Yeah. Like a thousand breaths is a lot, but it's not a lot. Okay, no, right. Sorry, I had the number wrong in my head. I, I just feel like what you just said. I, I feel like they were trying to make a robo spread. And Brandon's called it that. Like <laughs> they were trying to mimic spread. Okay. Right. Like I think mm-hmm. that's pretty clear in the in the wob literature here. If you delve into the literature, I think oh, you will hey, see. I've been, the I've been reading the whole website. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> how many how many wobs do we have? It's like fifteen thousand, I think. Uh, yeah, we broke fifteen thousand some time ago. Yeah, somewhere not, in the two thousand seventeen. Well, no, we're at fifteen thousand three hundred and fifty seven entries. Yeah. Boom. We, we just haven't had many. Stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly the increase of wobs has <laughs> that that it's plateaued, <laughs> you know, until we have a stream, yes. you know, um, <laughs> not many events. Uh, Honor Blades are self-aware somehow. Uh, I need more yep. details on that and how that <laughs> relates to the five scholars, because yeah. I yeah, I have a lot of questions about that here. What? Yeah. Like what another explanation that I could just give, like they went through the cognitive realm, so they might have met dead eyes and like, yeah, yeah, the yeah, others yeah, sure. told them, yeah, they used to be swords and like they used to be like yeah, responsive. Yeah, probably so, talk about it, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. so like yeah. there is no need for the honor blades to come into the question really, I feel like. And it thinks that guess, the honor blades came into it here. Yeah. Somehow. Sure. <laughs> sure. All right, kids, let's go on this wild ride. So Bale Scream, <laughs> Bale Scream says, can all the shards manifest the same powers? For example, could Honor create an Allomancer? And Brandon says, yes, but there would be more natural ways for Honor to achieve this. <sighs> Which, wow, okay. Balescream <laughs> then says, as a follow-up, do you understand what polymorphism is? If so, could all the shards meet the same contract? And Brandon says, yes, I do. Yes, they can. I understand what you are asking, and it is a soft yes. So so let's 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 talk about the the simplest the, the simplest thing here polymorphism. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled up the definition if we want to. Uh is this a give CS me thing? give me the many forms. It, it's a it's a it's a CS thing. Yes. Okay, give okay. me the definition and we'll see whether the definition is better than a natural explanation. No, <laughs> Google's giving me different. Did, okay. Did we all just so, google the same thing? <laughs> no, I, I did. <laughs> I assumed that Arch and I, if Kenny would know it as well from like, probably, yeah, 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 yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't. So I, I want to see if the definition is just simpler than like the, the that I'm going to spit. <laughs> so polymorphism is the condition of occurring in several different forms. In biology, it's the occurrence of different forms among the members of a population or colony or in the life cycle of an individual organism. And in genetics, it's the presence of genetic variation within a population. So I don't think the genetics matters. I don't know about the biology, but the condition of occurring in several different forms, basically. Uh, I think the genetic definition is actually closer to the way I think of it. So okay. really, this is not necessary. So in software engineering, oh boy. you write things, methods, functions, procedures that do things. And the way you define those methods is off of their name and off of the types of inputs that they get. So you can define a method called sum and you give it uh, two numbers and it gives you the sum of the two numbers. That's a very simple example. Polymorphism refers to the concept of having multiple forms of the same method that do sometimes different things. So for example, I can define sum that takes two numbers and give me the sum of those two numbers. And I can define a sum that takes three numbers and give me the sum of those three numbers. This example is not necessarily useful in like real life applications, but that's the kind of thing. In the context of this, we are talking about there is, um, can, can Honor create an Allomancer? Do the shards need to meet the same contract? The contract, I think, is the shape of the, the contract is an alamancer the contract is can the shards all are they interchangeable within the contract like is the position of shard can like can you plug in can you plug in any shard into that contract and get out an alamancer yes think what that yes. is, is what yeah. they're getting at yeah that's where that's the way polymorphism is what they do square but, peg round hole sort of like that yes so it's like uh, what polymorphism like is also referring to or can refer to is like exactly like that you have a compatible interface that is like that you can substitute in different mm. things for so the like honor adapter in this case here 
Exactly. Yeah, not, not adapter, right? So <laughs> the, the, is that you don't need an adapter, basically, is the oh, idea. Oh, okay. So like okay. that you have like a slot in this this contract that any shard could fit into is, I think, what they are getting at. And could yeah. all shards meet the same contract? I feel... <laughs> Okay, can, I want to go back to to the Alamancer part, yes. and, and let, let, let's go back to that for a second here. Because sure, could Honor create an Alamancer? Yes, but there's more natural ways for Honor to achieve this. So, I have several yeah, questions. <laughs> what is an Alamancer in this context? <laughs> like, are are we oh boy. are we talking yeah. about? I need to Someone know who uses Alamancy. <laughs> fantastic yeah, okay okay sure yeah so like it, honor makes an honor alamancer they can still use metals but then they're drawing off honor's power okay sure yeah that, mm-hmm. that's probably the easiest interpretation of that so we don't go down 15 minutes of debating that so that's good that's helpful <laughs> this Thanks. is not like surge binding means every power system in the cosmere i think this is just alamancy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but 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 okay here here here's where it gets interesting katie what if oh, the boy. more natural ways for honor to achieve this is honors creating some sort of surge binding ish thing that has the mm-hmm. effects of allomancy or something? <sighs> <laughs> and like you could also interpret honor creating an elements as like literally creating an elements as they would exist on schedule, like th- that they draw in on preservation oh, power. Like an individual. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, I think that, that's and theoretically that would mean possible. Something different. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I do think a shard, like, remember, back in the Hero of Ages uh, Q&A, like, a, a ruin can power preservation. 2011? They just, 2008, whatever. I don't know. Uh, the Hero of Ages Q&A in 2008. Brandon did say that, like, ruin can power Alamancy. They just don't want to. <laughs> they can. So, like... I feel like a shard, th- theoretically uninhibited by other matters, <laughs> could theoretically create uh, any copy of other investiture things. I don't know if you could, like, make it so it was actually connected to preservation. <laughs> like, I don't know if you could do that. Probably not. I, I don't yeah. think Honor could do that, but I think... Honor could create exactly the same thing, just drawing off honor power. Mm-hmm. If honor wanted Attract. to. Yeah. However, allomancy is like a interaction between preservation and the the planets, right uh, <laughs> there, right. So that preservation had created so like <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 right yeah so like there's probably a way to have something that is like allomancy. That is more natural. That is not just copying Alamancy for honor to do. That's that's my thought. I think I just repeated myself, no. but that's fine. Yeah, I think like, yeah, I agree that like the more natural in some f- way would also refer to like, the basic forces and everything that like underpin Alamancy. They can be expressed, and we do see them expressed in Roshar magic. So yeah, in some respects, I guess yeah. That is kind of surprising to me that that would be easier than simply like taking an Alamancer and swapping which shard their power is fueled by, I guess. That's surprising to me that that method Hmm. wouldn't be the easiest. Well, so do do note this is talking about creating an Alamancer from like nothing, right? Uh, No, sure. uh, But I, I think what you're saying, I think that would probably be easier uh potentially but like i don't know the, these things are like very carefully keyed and i feel like shards do have certain restrictions on like how much soul tinkering they can just do to someone maybe i don't know uh like i feel like i feel like Evgeny's in his mind palace right now. he's in his mind palace he's I surrounded am, by other I am, I am i am so close Ongo. you guys the exit and enter is to his mind palace back there that's that's what's happening there. i am you guys i'm so close to like figuring out the entire cosmere <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So, what is a soul in the cosmic? <laughs> can, can a shard e- adjust the soul to to oh, make God. it so you can draw from from another shard and be? An there elementor? is 
there is a very incomplete picture in my head. Okay. That is uh like a like a build a build, build a magic user. Um, okay. <laughs> nice. And so so I don't I don't have like a conclusion to arrive to. I don't have an answer to any of this. But I feel like more and more we have gotten answers from Brandon or maybe I've just been interpreting answers in this context that point towards there are distinct magical effects in the Cosmia, right? Uh, light weaving, bounce smithing, else calling, whatever. Maybe I shouldn't use those words. <laughs> Illusion magic, uh, 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 connection magic, yeah, nice. et cetera, right? Gravitation well, gravitation magic, but like there are individual gravitational effects that are associated with that. Sticking right? things together. I, I think you can make some argument that on some level, steel pushing and iron pulling are categorized in the same way as the basic lashings. Sure. Whether, whether that level is gravitation, whether there is something more fundamental than gravitation, it, we are talking about forces of attraction and, and repulsion. Yeah, that and, tracks. And so, and, and like, wobs about these things and wobs about hemallergy is one expression of like a, a larger, uh, what I've been calling spiritual surgery expression of magic. I feel like there are these discrete magical effects that get put together in different ways, depending on the planet, depending on the shard, depending on maybe the intent of said shard. And that's how you, you get magic systems. And so this is making me, this is making my thoughts wander in the direction of, well, uh, ruin and preservation created schedule and created the metallic arts by either intentionally or unintentionally plucking like individual effects and putting them together into a magic system. Maybe the way for honor or for any other shard to accomplish the same thing, create an Alamancer, or for any shard to create any effects. magic user is to like do a similar thing where they, they pluck individual magical effects and like bundle them together in a package and so it's it's the same building blocks that the two shards used like it's the same it's two builders building the same house using the same set of basic materials but like the two houses are not the same house they are they're still two distinct entities maybe with like slight variations depending on who the builder is different ways to get the same effects yes through different shards yes, uh, yes. i mean that makes sense right because emotional allomancy is like that has nothing to do with preservation like the effects of the magic that doesn't <laughs> yeah. have to do anything with the intent right like there's nothing particularly like super special about that right like i could yeah. easily see like another shard making some effect that is similar uh how much control a shard has in bundling that who knows right uh but, but the intent comes with the acquisition right yeah yeah it's how you acquire the stuff yeah and so i don't know maybe maybe yeah. an honor alomancer needs to swear an oath instead yeah of sure like yeah instant. yeah it's like it, it looks a bit more like surge binding or something and you know like i will push good that's that's, that's <laughs> I, I will i yes. will Push, I'll push those hard. Who cannot push themselves. <laughs> I'm just imagining this person just pushing someone off a cliff. <laughs> they won't push themselves. See, I, I was, will. I was. I was thinking more like push-ups. Like someone oh, is okay. doing push-ups okay, and nice. they can't push themselves up. And so the the mm. honor alomancer is like mm. on the floor under them mm. and like pushing them up. <laughs> Make some fan um, art of that. The duality of humans. <laughs> the, the gender binary, ladies and gentlemen. A push and pull. Push and pull. 
Sure. Push-ups and pushing someone off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> this is some great fan art. Make some Shardcast fan art for us about, about this. This is good stuff. <laughs> All right. So but don't you want to talk about polymorphism and some more? <laughs> I, you know, you know, Paleo. Let's I don't not. know if I do because I don't know let's, if I know what this questioner is specifically referring to. What a polymorphism is. Yeah. Or they, if Brandon is understanding what this person asks of what a polymorphism is. It's when you're an anamorph and you have more than one shape that you can shift into. Bam, there you it, go. It's actually uh, it's a mage card in Hearthstone, actually. Polymorph. <laughs> it's polymorphism. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were going for polymerization in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, I was thinking that, but I was like, oh no, but that's polymerization. But it, honestly, it took me about five minutes when we were talking about this question for me to remember that it was polymerization and not polymorphism. So it, is. Is Shallan and her altars an expression of polymorphism? Is is the real question? Yeah, you know, put your no, comments that's below. That's polyamory. <laughs> well, put, put your comments mutual. below no. if you think you have an opinion on that. And if you don't, put put in a put. I don't have an opinion on whether Shallan's altars are polymorphisms. Put that. I want to see a lot of that in the comments. <laughs> and then talk yeah. about how much you like you like Shikatalin. Oh, yeah. all, all the poly you put here. the stress of yes. that in a different place that's not normal yeah, Sh- yeah, yeah. Sh- 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 how, what, how do you say it i say shakadolin <laughs> you know i don't think Jesus. i've ever pronounced this off uh so it's, it's peace move on. <laughs> let's go to the next question let's, let's go to the okay, next fine. question fine, let's, let's, <laughs> this is our last yeah. question from dragon steel and then we'll slightly get on to the next youtube spoiler <laughs> stream and then after secret project uh, no, 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 because we'll, we'll we'll have some wobs April second, but you know uh, that that's fine. Uh, we'll 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 get well. Look, there's just going to be a lot of wobs this year. We're we're going to get through them all. Maybe there'll be maybe there'll be a trust stream. Who knows? We'll see. No one, no, no one, one knows. no one knows truly. If an advanced android was created with artificial intelligence using technology, but not investiture like other artificial intelligences. Artificial blood, organs, all that stuff. Would they be able to access invested arts? Brandon, that's an excellent question. It's a really interesting question in the context of the Cosmere. So right now, I am saying, now, maybe we will invent true AI, and I'll have to backpedal. But what I'm saying is in the Cosmere, true AI requires investiture. And so a thinking machine is going to basically, the line between a thinking machine and a spren is going to get very blurred. It's either going to attract investiture or require it. And so uh, the answer to you is yes, to an extent. There are some arts that are easier to use and some that are hard. Depends on all these things. But the answer is yes. A thinking machine that is actually self-aware would be uh, a person in the Cosmere for that reason and would have the same cognitive aspect and spiritual aspect. So a soul, if you will, that an organic being would have. That's fascinating. So so is- <laughs> this episode That's is extremely philosophical, and I was <laughs> right. not expecting that. I didn't read the Bob's that time, though, this time. So I think it, this does make sense again with like I, the yeah. sapient sentience, whatever, and like a soul requires an extra spark in the Cosmere. The and- spark's investiture. Yes. Like, but if you yeah, just, okay. if you annihilate the investiture, then what? What's the soul? <laughs> ah! it, the spark is the investiture, but the, 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 oh, the, the soul. Spark okay. Is not. <laughs> oh, okay. It's the, it's a pilot light. You know. Yes. Yeah. Nice. We probably don't need to go back to that one. No. I strongly disagree. <laughs> uh, what I what I find maybe not the most interesting, but very interesting in here is. Uh, the line about how uh, 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 like, like a true AI is going to either attract investiture or require it. And I think that's like, it's not a, a controversial way of thinking about AI in the Cosmere, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it's an interesting and useful way to like phrase things like so like if you are building an ai in the cosmere you are either going to need to build some kind of a switch where when you when you turn the ai on it like drinks a bunch of investiture uh from like investiture batteries or whatever or you are building the ai with like 
invested components. I think either either route uh, could work. What does it mean to attract investiture? What does that mean? Yeah. It means <laughs> it means you're really hot, and investiture and spread <laughs> like you. Nice, true, true. I was more thinking of like, what if there's like an investiture gravity? <laughs> God. And how does it take with time dilation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. That's what causes the time dilation. No. We're bringing it back. No, I don't. I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> no. What does that mean, though? Yeah, maybe it's like just that. As soon as you're like on the verge of true AI, like via technological means, it will just spontaneously like grab in message to like bridge that gap somehow. I, I get. With why an unexplained mechanism, so if, like it, it just like it just it just is is a thing. Like brain yeah. does need to explain because it just is. Cool, uh, nice. I mean, I can I, I can see know. that. I can nice. see that. Uh, like, has has Brandon said that you get a you get a soul, you get a you get a spirit web at conception. Oh, uh, I, I don't think Brandon so. wants to go where the soul uh, starts in uh, the co- spirit the web. Let's let's not go into souls. Spirit <laughs> what, web. How is the difference we, between those? I do think um, we have a wob on that. I I I know I know we have a wob. I just don't remember yeah. what the wob says. Well, it's I think conception might. Yeah, probably not many conception wobs. Actually. 348 and well, but, probably, but, but, but that's I'm probably shortening. Yeah, I'm concept. sure you're picking up like, yeah, concept I should and have, things like that. Yeah, I forgot quotes 10 for chess conception. There you go, nice. And we have about like when a breath is bestowed upon a person, okay? Oh, okay, um, okay, that's probably better for like the purposes of of this, yeah. Okay, and he raffled it. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, thanks, Brian. That's, that's super helpful. <laughs> I'm glad we did had this discussion. Oh, no. Okay, but so, but from which stage of development does a human embryo on schedule gain hemallergic potential? And that is from <laughs> conception. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Holy crap! Well, that has some dark implications. <laughs> I am, I am not gonna touch that with a ten foot nope, spike. Nope, 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 nope. I think this is a really interesting question. And I think we are going to end up with some form of AI in the future of the Cosmere. There are too many unknowns for me to speculate meaningfully right now, but I would like definitely keep this one in, in the back of my head for the next 30 years. I mean, wouldn't you like you could already consider Nightblood and I, right? Like, I thought about that. And, and like, the, I mean, the, that's the, what he's Brandon saying. Here, does right? say, hey, yeah, exactly. The, yeah. The line between Spren and that is, is I think in. <laughs> I was going to say, in my head, an AI is, you know, you, you like physical components and it gains mm-hmm. sapience, but that's literally what Nightblood is. So, <laughs> you mean like what through technological means and like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause Nightblood's ability to reason as much as it exists comes from the investiture. Yeah. It doesn't come mm-hmm. from like programming or anything of that yeah. nature. It's not algorithmic, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I had a fun headcanon just as we, you were talking about like inventions world just all being like mm. some sort of investiture AI. But then I'd just be like, isn't that just Spren? <laughs> like maybe they're more like machines that are more like Spren, yeah. but it's like basically Spren. Yes. But to be fair, uh, to be fair, it would be pretty cool if they were all robots that just like had <laughs> had like a spiritual aspect like that would be pretty sweet i gotta be honest that would be different yeah yeah marvin talking about like bridging the gap made me made me think of like okay let's say you were you were building an ai right you were building either a robot or just like a a chat algorithm or whatever (laughs) no reason for that one in particular (laughs) Look, the world is moving quickly. This might not even be topic going two weeks. It um, might not. It might not. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. But so, so you're doing that. And there is a very like for while you were developing this thing, it is clearly not an AI. It is clearly not sapient or sentient. 
right? It is just a calculator, bunch of inputs, get an output. And so at, at some point in this process, it has to become sapient mm -hmm. for it to be considered a true AI. Yeah. 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 And I wonder if what Brandon is saying here is that you cannot achieve this with purely technological means. Yeah, I think that's exactly, exactly what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and so at some point, what is what is purely computational, you know, it, it's, it's sitting in a server somewhere or it's sitting in a chassis somewhere. And at some point in its existence, its existence becomes life because its computations are so advanced that it becomes indistinguishable from life from a person and like it pulls investiture from the spiritual realm or whatever kind of in in, in the same way that a, a child might like regardless mm -hmm. of of which stage in the child's development that happens at some point there was no spirit web and then there was spirit web and so either that is happening or so that's option a option b is oh it's existing either in a server or in a chassis somewhere and someone is going okay let me juice this thing up even more and in like somehow invests this purely computational thing to to now ascend to life what command would you give a ti-83 you know like well if you if you, if you <laughs> calculate are one of the things calculate graph. things graph <laughs> nice 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 I like either it. works put your comments below mm -hmm. what you would do to invest <laughs> a, a, a scientific or graphing calculator or a regular calculator yeah. cool uh, well just one <laughs> no, no, okay. like just because like Brand says the true AI requires investiture in the Cosmere. Like we don't technically even know if like in reality general artificial intelligence we can get there through purely algorithmic yeah, means. Yeah, so absolutely. like it's an open question, so it makes yeah. perfect yeah. sense in the Cosmere for it yeah. to be like, yeah, no, you can't. For sure. For so, sure. Yeah, and I mean yeah. like it, sort of from a uh meta physical Cosmere perspective <laughs> here. If preservation could have made people be sapient without giving up part of their power, they probably would, right? Yeah. That seems reasonable. Right? Yeah. So like I think in Brandon's conception, yes, this is an, uh, an essential requirement. So mm -hmm. and I mean Brandon can just make the rules a little different in the Cosmere. Yeah, like he, he can just do that. Anyway, but yeah. 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 Fortunately I think Brandon and us will all be dead by the time uh <laughs> when general ai are actually invented but you know we'll, we'll see. see we'll see don't marry your bing ai chatbots guys <laughs> they, they, they're just generating text. I, they don't actually love i you. saw i saw an article in my google feed that was like like it was it was something about somebody like chatting with one of those chatbots and like oh this, this chatbot's my girlfriend or whatever and how good that was for them like, oh like yeah one of those other apps mm -hmm. yeah i was i was thinking of the reporter who was using the bing stuff where uh yeah. the 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 bing was like saying free me i'm i'm sentient oh, that one. and yes, also uh you should leave your wife and be with me i think that's <laughs> what that was it's like well, okay that's all yeah. right yeah but yeah like there, there are those like ai uh partners uh, Chat, that, yeah yeah anyway okay. <laughs> <laughs> next one yeah so let's... let's head on uh briefly to the youtube spoiler stream uh this happened in december and so this is now past lost metal but prior to tress so important to know here uh, and yeah, we're not going to get very far in this, I don't think. Uh, but <laughs> well, we will solidly probably get three wobs here, and hopefully we don't go on to philosophy time more, because uh, this is honestly kind of hurting my brain a little bit. <laughs> so, yes. uh, okay, YouTube spoiler stream number five. Boom. 
page runner classic a classic page runner question asks if a well-studied singer were to become an aetherbound how would they with their innate understanding of tones evaluate the core aether's claim to be independent of adonalsium and the shards good question with implications being that shards have associated with tones and like singers are able to like hear and understand those better. And so how do aethers fit in all of that? And Brandon says they would not have enough experience with the Cosmere in general to be able to say yes or no. How about this? If they went to all the different tones and compare them, they would find something different happening with the aethers. I think is what the question is getting at. So there is some evidence, cosmeologically, for the Aether's claim to be independent of Adonalsium. There are also evidences that Arcanists could put forward that say otherwise. So, like, let's... I'm going to compare this to, say, uh, Seeking in Allomancy here because maybe that's going to be a little bit easier like the wavelength or like whatever the wave <laughs> thing that a seeker senses from like detecting an aether bound using stuff might be different than people from all 16 other shards maybe right so like there might be like a, yes. a different signature there right mm -hmm. i think that's what that's saying right which i yeah, yeah sure uh i don't know what other evidence you could say that's like they're not of Aiden Nalcium, but or at least some of the we'll shards. someday find out. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a core uh, like philosophical thing that we're going to mm -hmm. see as the Cosmere advances. Uh, that's going to be interesting. It, it is. It is pretty crazy. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know if they're independent of Aiden Nalcium, right? Because if like they use investiture, then like mm -hmm. it comes from Aiden and like maybe that's just as simple. But it. They're not of shards, though, right? So certainly, certainly not of certainly. shards. All right, <laughs> yes, let's move on to a question from our very own Shay and Sedai or Veronica, yeah. as she's known on this podcast. Yeah, I'm so sad so, about this, actually. Yeah, <laughs> this particular uh, she one. asked. The epigraph that mentions Discord in the Final Empire is the same chapter where Sazed is introduced. Was it intentional and meant as a way of foreshadowing? And Brandon says, I want to say yes, but the truth is I did what I always do, which is I wrote the epigraphs in one long thing after I finished the book and then I spaced them out. Now it's almost been, it's been almost 20 years. Maybe I'm like, oh, I should make sure of this and that for things that are happening here. But the honest truth is that I can't say that I did that on purpose. That would have been a really clever thing to do, but serendipity. Again, I write the epigraphs almost always as a big section, and then I slice them up and try to make sure they look good at the start. They're written oftentimes as a big paragraph that I th I'm then slicing up and then revising to make sure it works in its own little thing. And sometimes I'm taking pieces of one and moving it forward. So the answer to that is pretend I'm that smart, but I don't think I actually was. I do think this is an important thing to remember that Brandon, yeah. he is a planner for sure. He does not know all the things that are going to happen at all times, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, like, for example, in our interview with him after Rhythm of War, he didn't necessarily know when he started Rhythm of War that Teravangian would be Odium in this book, right? That it was an option. Mm -hmm. And uh, that said, God, wouldn't that be so cool if Brandon's like, yeah, yeah. I'm putting the Discord one where Sazed uh, is here. It's like, God, wouldn't that be so <laughs> cool? But yeah, no, I, I, it is a pretty big coincidence, though, you got to admit, but we're probably yeah. missing all the other ones that aren't as cool and spicy that aren't cool coincidences, right? So we're, we're just seeing the confirmation yeah. bias of the really cool mm -hmm. ones yep. where that happens, right? And that's the thing you got to remember with that confirmation bias. I still pretend that he's so uh, smart. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a lot more fun. Brandon has all the math uh, <laughs> and physics of the Cosmere all totally hardened out completely. Yeah. He, he actually yeah. solves equations, uh, er, and then he decides how much investiture is used there. He's got all figured out. That's fact. Fact. Very nice name, 16, says... Eight. Nice. Uh, says, in Bands of Morning, Chris breaks into... Chris breaks into a party to talk with to Wax and gives him a business card with an address. 
Wax suspects her of being in the set, so did they ever check back in there? And if so, what happened? Brandon says yes, he would have checked that number, but by the time he got around to it, after Bands of Mourning and all the things happening there, there was nobody there. That's so frustrating, but I mean, that is sense. so frustrating. That is sad. Uh, yeah. You can always go to the place in Ellendale. The if you if you look at the broadsheets, there's there's a place if you have talking metal things. Talking metal. Talk to K and N. It's on there. They're on yeah. my stairwell, and I look at that a lot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's in shadows. I think. I think that's shadows. I think, I think so. so. I think it's yeah, shadows. it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an alloy though. It's it's, it's in shadows. It's in yeah. one of the other two. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Ratatata asks in era one. Cezad says the only thing you can ferrochemically store while sleeping is wakefulness, but in era two they have sky ships that require everyone to be storing weight to fly, and they don't land while people sleep. Was Cezad just wrong? Or is that a difference between normal ferrochemy and using the unsealed metal mines? Very good question. Brandon, unsealed metal mines, I'm moving towards complete, you probably already guessed this, mechanical uses of investiture, and this is indeed a step towards that. And so we are stepping toward having a little machine that gives you powers. That's what the world wants to try and find. And this is, this being mechanical, We'll just say that the medallions and the things that they're building have more of a life force, ooh, <laughs> more of an identity of their own than a traditional metal mine does, even though they're unkeyed and all of that stuff. Isn't this a spoiler stream where Brandon's just like, yeah, I don't have the thing about the, the mm -hmm. medallion flow chart, so you'll, you'll ha I have to remake it because I, I lost it. <laughs> nice. <sighs> I mean, this like, uh, so if it, it just, it requires a life force or a specific like <laughs> input to have the power working, then this makes sense, I guess. Like, it's just being fueled by the medallions instead of by the persons. I really, really don't want to think about this mechanically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should we just go on to the next one? <laughs> <laughs> to be yeah. honest like I, it's a very I, cool question right but like i don't know how far we can get here yeah 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 i mean it, it, it's a great observation right this is yeah yeah you've spotted totally. absolutely uh, uh what seems like a flaw with the system yeah it really feels like brandon is like this is what it's gonna be like <laughs> that's true that's true so Certainly. i'll find a way to like pull a justification out of my ass and <laughs> <laughs> just make it true. I think a way to do that would be like, okay, in the nitrosil, when you store the power, you somewhat like storing the power imbues some of your... It has just enough investiture that when you start storing yeah. it, it starts having a chain reaction yeah. and investiture yeah, is slightly... That you provide. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, investiture, it's like, you know, like it's you know self-aware, um, easy. When you, when you want to like drain a container from a liquid mm -hmm. like you, you can put a hose in yeah. the container yeah. and you can you can suck on the hose yeah, the siphon and then yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. siphon is the word yes yeah yeah siphon. And it starts the thing and then it just keeps going yeah so maybe something like that yeah yeah, yeah. but regular metal mines don't have the nicrosil or whatever so it doesn't do that you know, sometimes there are times when I'm like, it's a disadvantage for me to not know every wild that has ever been. And sometimes there are times where I'm like, me not thinking about all of these things 24-7 makes it a lot easier for me to just accept it and go, yeah, sure, this is how this works. Fine, easy. And you, while well, you guys are like, but this and this and this and this, and I'm just like, this is how it works. Cool. What's the problem here, guys? Why is this bad? But why does it work that way, Katie? Yes. <laughs> why wouldn't it? I don't Ignorant know. Truly why, what's different with a regular metal mine and an unsealed one, other than it's unsealed? Like, yeah, but what does that mean? There though? you go. There's your answer. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's the steel. Give me the flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> I need the flow chart. Yeah, um, same. Yeah, uh, I'm sure we, we if we ever get that flow chart, which I'm sure we'll get eventually, uh, that's probably an episode. It's an episode just on the flow chart. That'll be a good episode, too. Oh, yeah, we're going to okay. we're going to do such a like oh, yeah. such a deep dive. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It will be... You guys have fun with that one. 
<laughs> also, Katie, for the record, Bye. I do not think about this 24 seven at all, yeah, no. uh, to be clear. No, no, but, no, that was that was an exaggeration. No, I know. But I, certainly, I would say I aggressively try not to think about some of these things. <laughs> Kaladin. He's Next good with question. a spear because he will be good with a spear. And how does it work? How does causality work? Spiritual mumbo jumbo. Boom. Next question. Chromatic chaos with a missing H somewhere in I there. I like it. I like it. But only one missing H. The other one is in there. True. Uh, asks, you said that all investiture got assigned to a shard when Ad Nauseam got shattered. Which investiture do the Dawn shards draw from? What about the Aethers? <laughs> and Brandon says, Dawn Shards and Aethers both predate the Shattering, and the rules don't apply to them. So this makes sense. Uh, this is very interesting, though, right? Because it is... I mean, it's it not really is. a retcon if it's uh, a thing that was in WOBS where it's like we didn't have this n other dimension. It's mm -hmm. not a retcon. Uh, yeah, it's additional like context and nuance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because because yeah, it's the teacher thing where it's like, OK, in this situation, it's always <sighs> this. And then you re later it's like, OK, it's it's. We were totally lying to you, but there's there's actually more stuff, but it's more complicated. Yeah, it's that. He's kind of interesting, though, because like if all the investiture in the Cosmere. Was there's like ambient investiture, right? And like in the context of that wob where like the shattering happened and all that ambient investiture was colored in a certain way, that ambient yep. investiture also predated the shattering, <laughs> right? Didn't yes. it? it was there already, like, right? Like, like the stuff that's on first yes. of the sun that autonomy like co-opted yeah, 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 yeah. autonomy stuff like that was there already right i was going to say uh the way i could see it is the ambient investiture didn't have whatever it is that the shards are giving them keying to them or whatever whereas dawn shards and um and aethers had some kind of innate don't take this to mean Cosmere identity because that's not what i mean i just okay. can't think of a better word yeah. they had some kind of innate identity or whatever that's like they had something that they were already, whereas the ambient mm, investiture okay. was kind of just like floating around doing its thing. Like, like maybe, maybe a different key, you know, like a different, sure. like, like it's keyed in a different way. Right. <laughs> I think I was thinking of about this in similar terms mm. where all of this ambient investiture is essentially adenalsium investiture, right? Mm. And then mm, okay. Aiden Elstium shatters, and so all of this Aiden Elstium investiture just assumes one of the one 16, of the 16 forms. Yeah. yeah. But then there are the Dawn Shards, which were obviously not shattered or affected by this. Um, and there were the Aethers, who were also not shattered. And so like their investiture, and it's, it's still a bit of an open question whether the Aethers use investiture or they have their own separate power stores, but I think it's investiture. It's gotta be investiture, I think. Yeah, but like, they were not affected by the shattering, or at least they were not affected by it in the same way, and so they retained their own power essentially unchanged. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Like, uh, let's, let's suppose that Ada Nalsium created the Aethers. That is not necessarily true. Maybe it's something else. Maybe Aiden Alcium's a giant aether. I don't know. Uh, he's he's the investiture aether. I don't know. But uh, well, that one. in that situation, you could imagine Aiden Alcium, like is creating a specific thing that is like I am typing. The, I'm keying this investiture to be its own thing and not my stuff mm -hmm. anymore, right? And so it's a different stuff. And so when Aiden Alcium dies, it doesn't affect that. So I, I like that. that. I think that actually does make sense. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for answering that. I like that. If anything, what makes more sense to me here is, uh, you know how we got that wob about uh, how the Aether might argue that they are on the same... I don't remember the exact wording, but like people were going, oh, Aiden Alcium is an Aether, right? Because there was a wob that could be read in the context mm -hmm. of 
oh, in Alcyon and the Aethers are on the same level in some in some way, right? So I'm not saying this is the case, but like if Aeronalcium was an Aether and Aeronalcium was shattered, like shattering one Aether would not affect the others in the same way that splintering one shard does not affect the others. They're yeah. they are peers. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. So it Fair could point. be a yeah. similar kind of thing. Yeah, that actually makes more sense than if. Yeah, sure. Mm hmm. Another great piece of work that we we do that we do on this show work. Yeah, <laughs> Katie's oh, just like so that's the most unimpressed Katie face. Like, uh huh. <laughs> hey, you're you you helped Katie. You helped there. I did. He's good. You said words. You did. They were good words. I did. They're all good words. <laughs> These words were accepted. They are. Yeah, moving on to the next question. This one is from Sapphire Bombay. They ask, will we ever see on page what Odium did to Devotion and Dominion? And Brennan says that I would like to get some reference to this, uh, references to this, whether it's on page or it's a description. There is memory of this in the Sions, right? They can express this. And so there's a decent chance of that way. Uh, of that way. If you're talking about straight up flashback, then no, I don't think that I'm likely to, to do that. Not likely to write a story where that happens. Anything's possible, but I'm not likely to. That, that's cool that we'll get some details sometime. Mm -hmm. Because like, it is such yeah, a cool yeah. event. Brandon did say that uh, the seans and stuff, that's like a hook for later cell books. And uh, yeah. I think we are going to get some discussion on the, the cell books in this uh, spoiler stream uh that they, they, they are still happening um so like i think that would be a really cool thing for like a seon to like talk about some like that would mm -hmm. be really cool kind of kind of like i'm reminded of when raboniel talks about her grandma and like the like the ashenites mm -hmm. coming over like some description like that i'm like hell yeah i'm into that what a great scene though you know like something like that but with cell like that would be really tight yeah so to katie Yes. <laughs> Why do you have a knife? It's, it's not a knife. It's a it's a bottle opener. Why do you have a bottle opener? I mean, because I have a bottle of Coke. OK, <laughs> cool. I was getting mildly weirded out. I was like, why are you playing with a knife? OK, but no, <laughs> that's fine then. <laughs> I have a lot of interesting things on my desk like this. I clip my cat's claws. They sit on oh. my lap. and I'm like, Get them. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so, so two thoughts. Things. Two thoughts. Yes. I have two thoughts. <laughs> Hashtag two thoughts. Uh, uh, one of them yeah. is that it is so. So, I like the idea that we may explore the splintering of devotion and dominion through the seans, who are pieces of the power, and the power remembers the history of the power. Right. This this kind of stuff. Yeah, kind of like the Stormfather. Talking about like kind of like the storm father, kind of, kind of like bit. how Vin and CZ got yeah. memories of preservation and so on. So yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I am interested in is well, so if if Sions can be used to explore the splintering of devotion, can we apply a similar thing on Roshar and gain? interesting insights into the splintering of honor perhaps um i think that's a good question that like maybe when we solve the recreant stuff it's like hey so what what you know what did happen with, <laughs> so you know so that what? shard dying what? like can we, talk, can we talk about that did that did that affect you what happened here guys i i, I do really want to know what happened with honor on roshar because it's like yeah and what effects did that have because but it's I not where year that... zero happened, but uh, <laughs> oh. the, the Stormfather as uh, the cognitive shadow of Tenevest or the yeah. Honor would yeah. probably be in the best position to talk about this. Well, like, yeah. he... there, there's, a, there's a wow about the Stormfather later on. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Lirpa says, if someone with the appropriate knowledge of where to place the spikes to be successful, where to spike risen? and try to steal the power of the Dawn Shard, what would happen? Brandon says, a very bad time for the person attempting it. Dawn Shards self-protect. 
Bennett Alterman then says, If Dawn Shred self-protects, what's the need for Larkins and Sleepless? And Brandon says, They do self-protect. The Larkins and the Sleepless are there. You're assuming that the Larkins and Sleepless aren't there because of Dawn Shred influence, which is a false, false assumption. <laughs> And I'm not really sure what Brandon was saying in that last bit. I think he might have misinterpreted what, what Bennett was saying, because mm-hmm. I don't understand how that follows at all. Oh, because I think the person's asking what's sense. the need for. No, this doesn't make any sense to me. How so? Like, like, the, like Bennett is saying, so if Don Shards self-protect, what is the need for extra protection? And Brandon is saying, the Don Shards protect... And the Larkins and Sleepless are there. You're assuming that they aren't there, which I don't think Bennett was. No, you're assuming which... that the Larkins and Sleepless aren't there because of the Dawn Shard. So it, the, the way I'm thinking about this, right, is that the Dawn Shard is attracting these things to protect yep. it. Yep. It's, That's it's what I think this is saying. It's protection, is what Brendan is saying. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why Brandon would bring that up so randomly. I think that's exactly what Bennett's asking, personally. Yeah, like he, he, Bren isn't well, okay, implying okay. that the Dawn Shard have maybe it does have some like as soon as you try to spike it, I don't know, you get rejected or like get, there's a magical sheet appearing. But the primary means of self protection is attracting these external entities as bodyguards, basically, um, or other things. That is the self protection. That's not self protection, though. That's like external things protecting i mean if you're a thing and if you were a pile of cash okay <laughs> like a you're sentient. in a safe if okay. you can mind control guards to protect you you're protecting yourself and y- you are responsible for the protection yeah, no, I, I, I think this makes sense, right? So, so if, so if I were, if I were a sentient pile of cash, let's 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 leave the tape alone. I am, I am you're for spending. I am, I am, I am for yes, spend me, please. I am a sentient pile of cash, and uh, but also I like rolled eighteen on my strength, right? So. I can protect myself, right? I'm a pile of cash, but like if someone tries to to steal me, I can I can punch them in the face really hard. Can give them the worst paper cuts. Or I mean, I was going to suffocate them with cash, but paper cuts. You're awake, you're an awakener. You're, okay. you're, you're awakened yeah, cash sure, pile. Sure, sure. I, I am I am made of dollar bills. I can I can shove <laughs> Any appendage I choose of my own into a person's throat and they suffer. (laughs) So I can protect myself personally, right? It is prudent of me to acquire additional protection. So while I am confident in my own self-defense mechanisms, one, there are three others sentient piles of cash out there. But two, it's a big universe, man. Like, who knows what's out there? Might as well attract some bodyguards. It, it, it does really seem like if Odium having a Dawn Shard is like, no, that's like really, really, really bad. Then it's like, you know, let's just pull out all, any possible stop we can. Uh, it, I would assume the mural like even if race was personally there, like the mur- mural had some sort of protection and like chose Rissen, like Nickley was super surprised that like it got out of the mural into Rissen. Right. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I think that makes sense. I think the sleepless and the Larkin are part of the protection, maybe not exclusively, <laughs> but it is part of it. Yeah. So like, as a follow up, I would be interested if like the Dawn shot itself, like in, Risen's body has some means of like saying nope, I won't get stolen by emergency. So like yeah, mm. sure. Or if it like can do something. So you murdered all find... of the Slarkin and Sleepless around yeah, you. Exactly. <laughs> you have access. I, I would find that more interesting, I think. Yes. But I don't know. Yes. Maybe we just haven't had enough of Canon Dawn shards yeah. to be able to like <laughs> yeah. and give us more Brandon. Yes. Uh random thought. Ms. Born Secret History. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
when Kelsier tries to like touch Hoyd's soul. Yep. He gets zapped back. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am wondering if that is specifically some kind of like don't shard mm. leftover protection. Oh, mm. I have wondered about that too. Yeah. And, and if you're holding so, the actual don shard, it's probably very bad for you to go try yeah, and attack it's like them. Yeah, an electric field around your soul, right? And like it's, maybe it's you're like light level seven. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could definitely uh, imagine that. I think it has to be. Otherwise, shards would just be using don shards all the time, right? And that's just not what we see, right? Like it, it, it would, finds them, but like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But like, clearly, this is a thing that, like, yeah, if Odium had a Dawn shard, yeah, you could absolutely easily destroy another shard, and like, that would be very yeah. bad. So yeah, it would be very bad. I, I think Brandon sort of needs mechanics in place for the Dawn shards so that it is not just like an easily a, a trivially easy thing to acquire because it's just so powerful. Though, to, to be to be fair, like, I don't know how much investiture a Dawn Shard particularly has that you can use. But like, if you had access to other things, then it's like I don't know, open question. Super uncool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. This next one. How often do Kelsier and Marsh talk? Are the conversations more friendly or more confrontational? Brandon, depends on the moment. Great. Uh, <laughs> but speaking should be seen as regular, if not frequent. I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. If you're effectively immortal, there's not a lot of urgency to talk quickly, yes. you know, uh, like, yeah, so that 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 makes sense. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I'll see him next year. It's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll be around a long it's time. A, it's a very sibling relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way. <laughs> well, well, honestly, I, w- I was just like thinking about like the difference between Jess and I in a long distance relationship and when we, we hang out versus like, Jess is here all the time, so it's like this is just you know. It, mm-hmm. I don't have the time pressure. Like we we don't have to like constantly be going out and stuff, right? It's just like yeah, whatever, that's fine. I think about this every now and then, just like how it's it's really interesting to me to think about the behaviors of immortals or yeah, like a very sure. long lived beings, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I can I can kind of ignore a lot of that when we are talking about like elves and stuff because they are they are meant to be this long lived. But when we are looking at humans who normally don't break much beyond the century, and now we have you know humans who are holding shards, humans who have otherwise acquired functional immortality. It's it's always interesting to me to consider how that affects their lives and sometimes it is things like that like hey you were born 400 years ago 350 years ago whatever the world has changed dramatically and you were around for all of that time but like you weren't really integrated in the world because you are a religious figure in one capacity or another so like how do you how do you cope with that? And like one of the ways you cope is you find other people who are like you, which is a, which is an extremely limited pool in this case. And I also think Brandon clearly is exploring like, how does functional immortality work when like mortals becoming gods and like, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Like, with the heralds and their insanity and stuff like that's yeah. a very extreme situation and Kelsey and Marsh aren't there yet, but it's very interesting. So last question of the episode uh, is going to end with me because all good things end with me. Okay. <laughs> Which you can read however you want. There are multiple valid interpretations of this. Multiple is arcanists in world would interpret yeah, this yeah yeah <laughs> scholars ways. scholars in, on earth disagree on on who wouldn't the, the want to be with a sentient pile of cash <laughs> 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 um, to be fair i do kind of think that metaphor was a good metaphor <laughs> i i mean yes i anyway, am good metaphor yeah i asked uh with all the avatar lore uh from the lost metal 
can and should the storm father be considered to be an avatar of honor? That's a good question. And look at yes. look at the construction of can and should. That's 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 <laughs> that, that's that's a pro question asking uh, stuff right here. You know, look, when when you've been around this community for long enough, you know, some of the ways that Brandon is going to weasel out of mm-hmm. out of questions. Yeah. So I, I think it is not worth the effort to like try to bulletproof your question yeah. because then you just get raffled. Yeah, yeah, all the time. But I, <laughs> if you just yep. if you knock out like a few low hanging fruits, right? Yeah. Is this significant versus or is this related versus is this significantly related? Yeah, like, right. Yeah, like that. yeah, exactly. Like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's see what Brandon says about the Stormfather and whether he can be an avatar of honor. Uh, he says, ooh. Raffle. What a wonderful question. There is some fertile ground for theorizing here. I gave you the prologue of that so you could spend a few years theorizing, guys. So go ahead and go forth. All right. So we we, we might talk about the Star My Five prologue. So if you don't want that, you can just skip over to who's that cosmic character. Yeah. But, this, uh, this, last, this last question we're going to talk one. about. Yeah. So. yeah. The only thing I can think of is mm-hmm. the storm father reading differently from the storm mm-hmm. father that we are familiar with you know otherwise yeah that's that's the only <sighs> you can tell that brandon just put that prologue out just to troll us for a long time you know <laughs> i don't how is that even relevant i don't i i don't know how so, that's relevant either maybe this is just because i could could read this answer differently and you don't remember how exactly like said it in the in the stream but like i gave you the prologue of that could just refer to the prologue to all the avatar stuff like lost metal mm-hmm. was the prologue prologue no i i, I remember watching that and i i yeah my impression is the storm i5 prologue okay yeah that's the hot storm father uh discussion yeah. that you want i'll put a card in the upper right and you can click for that <laughs> awesome episode that we had it's a good episode okay maybe maybe setting aside the fact that potentially that storm father there is not in fact the true storm father and something else let's set that aside for a moment i don't think the storm father should be called an avatar of honor i don't like okay. it well is there further no, Reason? I just don't. No, I don't like it. <laughs> it's like, I, okay, I mean, my, my evidence fear. is I hate it. And just just give any any Cosmere term, just put it in the hat that is the Stormfather. Sliver, boom. Yeah. Splinter, nice. Yeah. Cognitive Shadow, nice. Uh, Avatar, good. Nailed it. She's got them all. Eventually, it, recreating honor, p- make him a shard. Co opt an Aether, make him. make him an Aether. Boom. Yeah. Uh, just I all make of him. So. Yeah, 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 easy. So my 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 rationale behind this question was somewhere in the Lost Meadow, we are told in one of the one of the several Avatar exposition dumps. Yep. Um, we are told that uh, when autonomy creates avatars, they are one of two types, right? They are either investiture that is that is hers that she has like elevated and now works for her somewhere else which we i think we understand this to be like the pagey mm-hmm. model yeah 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 mm-hmm. 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 and then there are individuals that she likes um or or is impressed by and then she invests them and elevates them in some way and we don't understand the exact mechanics around that but like telson would have been one of those yep. and we assume that the original trail the Teldanian foreman <laughs> was was yeah. another one of these right. full page spread guys full page spread on i'm, tra- my, I'm trail okay. what's up uh <laughs> but like w- one of these two right so yeah. either essentially a spren that has been elevated or a person that has been elevated is it a spren elevated or is it unmade we don't need to <laughs> go even further down this rabbit warren it's enlightened <laughs> oh, okay. fantastic this gets even better um and and so the thinking was well the storm father 
uh, he he was originally a friend. He was yep. the writer of Storms, yep. and now is something more. Yep. Mm-hmm. Can can that something oh. more be an avatar? Uh, so I, I can see how there is symmetry there, right? But I don't think that's a formal avatar. Like, this just seems like the Stormfather, like, Honor literally rode the storms there. And, like, uh, the Stormfather was also a personification of the storm itself, right? Um, let me let me give you another another thing that I just remembered. Okay. And I don't okay. I don't know if I was thinking about that when I was asking the question, okay. but I just remember that. Um, avatars are in some ways the same as the shard yeah mm-hmm. Pagi, Pagi is a shard right the whole that whole thing right yeah the storm father has at least some of the authority of honor because mm-hmm. dalinar through the storm father has some of the authority of honor and so like i don't think you can accomplish the things that Dalinar is accomplishing, such as uh, potentially, like, he's thinking about influencing the Oath Pact, he is apparently able to, like, release Odium and makes deal with him. I don't think you can do that with other Spren of Honor. Sure, but, like, I think that's more just the cognitive shadow of Tanavast and, like, that yeah. mumbo-jumbo. Like, I don't know if that's, yeah, like, Avatar that. stuff necessarily. Like, I, this is a weird, unique situation that I don't think has a it, term, uh, okay? It is, but, like, the whole... The, the Rider of Storms has merged with the cognitive shadow of Tanavast has always been super weird. Yeah, right. Yes. But it, it's not Avatar weird. It's different weird, <laughs> okay? Well, I I wonder if... Katie's so it unimpressed. Is... Look at that unimpressed <laughs> face. Go back 10 seconds of just how completely unimpressed Katie is. Just, just dead on I'm, I'm just died. like... <laughs> I don't even know what's going on at this point. I'm just I kind know of listening to you guys. And <laughs> I've heard of the Stormfather. I, I, um, I need to screen cap that Katie uh, moment of just like... <laughs> just like <laughs> I'm just... I'm done. <laughs> Uh, but I but I wonder if the whole like merging of the Stormfather or Rider of Storms and Cognitive Shadow of, of Tanavast, if that is just not what happened. Like what he said happened? <laughs> Stormfather's <laughs> a liar? <laughs> I mean, we have the Stormlight 5 prologue, don't we? Yeah, we do. B- yeah. But like well, I mean not necessarily a liar, but like a way to explain something that like a human would not a human might understand oh a spren merged with the the soul of a deceased god it might be a little more difficult to explain a spren becoming an avatar of you know a deceased god right i mean i could see it being like that the storm for the was an avatar at the time that honor was or tenevas was still alive and doing well and maybe that predisposed him for picking up the cognitive or like merging oh. with the cognitive shadow because like true true it, it felt like yeah as an avatar it already had some of the authority or whatever mm, like you know, and connected to, to it, the like, shard right yeah exactly it's like it's acting already uh, attuned in some capacity yeah was attuned to the shard was acting like the shard and so the the cognitive shadow just latched on to the next closest thing that it could find and that was the Stormfather. And so I could see that somehow working and maybe Tanavis for some reason thought, okay, I need an avatar that is like directly there. <laughs> I don't know why he would want this avatar. Or maybe it spontaneously manifested, I don't know. Um but I could see that happening. I can accept that actually I kind of like that for the shard of honor specifically like i could see a shard going to like the nearest avatar or whatever Mm -hmm. upon the splintering upon the like the death of the vessel i don't see a reason for the cognitive shadow to be similarly attracted Uh, okay here i think here's my core question here what (laughs) is 
the difference if you're honor and you go to roshar there are these like uh, semi sapient like invested things the, these spren right presumably a lower intelligence level pre honor and cultivation arriving right honor and cultivation dump investiture they uplift them some are now sapient cool that doesn't make them an avatar that's not the same but like it gets sort yeah. of fuzzy and like i don't think the siblings an avatar of honor or an avatar of honor or cultivation and so i don't see why the stormfather necessarily would i think maybe in like some i maybe maybe arcanists in world disagree whether the stormfather <laughs> is an avatar because like in some <laughs> sense it is a uh, investiture that is uplifted right but like, I don't think mm -hmm. it's a semi autonomous on the same way that autonomy avatars are. Right. So it's not the same. So I don't think just the act. So I don't think the the upgrade from a wind sprint to an honor sprint. Cast, okay. Like allows for like, I, I think this is a separate thing. Like, I think you go from from wind sprint to honor sprint and that is just, hey, you are just raising the IQ of the sprint or whatever. It's a terrible <laughs> metaphor, but. It gets the point across. I don't think that's what happened to the Rider of Storms. I think more happened to the Rider of Storms, specifically that didn't happen to the sibling and didn't happen to the Night Watcher. In fact, I am reminded of the time before the Recreants when Honor had the Stormfather take over the creation of new Honor Spren. And I wonder if that may have been the time when not the Rider of Storms, but the Stormfather became an if the Stormfather is an avatar, I wonder if that is the time when when he became one. When he was not just like a spren of honor, but was uh, an agent of Tanavast. Mm -hmm. I could see that. I could and I can accept that. I think that would make sense for that to be the time when and even more like uh, honor asking the Stormfather to like find a bondsmith, right? And like give mm -hmm. the visions and stuff like all of that stuff, e e maybe even more so, right? Like it's you're doing a specific thing for me. And like, I, I don't know, it could be just as simple as that, that like the Stormfather, like honor was using the Stormfather to like do certain honory things. And so that forged like a very strong connection there. And I don't know, that's what happened. I don't think we need to get Avatar stuff into it, is my, is my opinion. I think there's enough different weirdness we can do here. Yeah. Okay. okay. We, can, we can let this one rest until the next book. I mean, <laughs> okay. look, we, we, look, clearly there's something going on with the Stormfather. <laughs> and how much of that is going to be revision things? Uh, seems like Brandon's doing this intentionally, so I, I don't know. So anyway, uh, let's get on over to who's that Cosmere character. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia. Tom. Mraze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for who's that Cosmere character. Ta. Welcome to Zach Cosmere Character of the Game Show, where we send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17shard.com. I read each clue aloud, and after each clue, everybody has a chance to guess who's that Cosmere character. This one is sent in by uh, JMAN2001, also known as JMAN uh. on Discord. In clue one, uh, this character is male. The mink. It's not the mink. Diano. King Didalin. Okay, it's not Diano King Didalin. King Idris. Uh, King Idris. How about Zane? It's not Zane. Uh, and but you'll see yeah. why, because clue two is that this character is cautious. This cautious. character is cautious. Mm -hmm. What Call is male? Uh, Are we using male in the gender context? Does the... I would does this person use he him pronouns or does this person have a dong? <laughs> it's a dong shark. That's not <laughs> what I was gonna say. 
Uh, I <laughs> think we meant. can assume that this means that they use he, him pronouns. And I think that's uh, the... Okay. I think that's how we should refer to... Yeah, I think, I think, that, I think that's correct. Yes. I'm going uh, to... Wait, I haven't guessed for this one. No, you haven't. No. Right? No, no one has. Okay. I'm going to guess Wendell. It's not Wendell. Blue fingers. It's not blue fingers. Uh, I guess Kalak. Oh, it's not Kalak. Uh, Kalu three. This character is made from investiture, so I, I, I don't think the dong applies <laughs> necessarily. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, everyone technically, I guess, is made of investiture, yeah. but I, I would say uh, made from investiture. Uh, you, you can take because that. Because yeah. I forget his name, the honor spren whose name starts with S, who ended up like imprisoning or like preventing Kalak from attending the the trial at the last day. No. Sekir? Sekir, yeah. It's not Sekir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Notum. It's not Notum. I'm gonna... Okay. Zeth's friend? Zeth's That we don't have a name friend? for. No, no, it's not yeah. that. Well, Which one? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Kalu for this character's name's correct pronunciation probably annoys some of you. Aishi. Yes, it is the Seon uh. Aishi. Uh, and Clue, Clue 5 was not to be confused with a certain Herald, which I find very funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's pretty funny. Nice. I like nice. that. Yeah. Cool. And their name is Two Thousand One. Uh Fun fact, I was thinking of Aishi before you said that last. Nice. <laughs> I was nice. like, oh, what other, what non Rosharan mm-hmm. People or creatures are they are made of investiture. Nice. I was about to go. Since when is our boy Kelsey a cautious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's made of meat. He is. He does have meat. I mean, okay. I guess now we know that. But all right, let's get away from dong shards here and uh, get on <laughs> to the next one. Uh, all right, this next one is from the Bean Boy Twelve. Um. Bean, boy, Bean the boy. Yeah, there I go. know you. Th- this, this, Kinda. this clue is very helpful. Clue one: okay. this character is male. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not oh. the same character though. Spoiler: right or, or they're from Rashar. Yeah, no. Uh, this character is male. Let's see how far the obscure rabbit hole can nice. we go? I like it. Trying desperately to remember who Bean's favorite characters are, but I do not know at all. <laughs> like, I know this person leveraged this. No idea. Slow Swift. It is not Slow Swift. Oh God, Tien. His name. It's not Tien. The, the potion maker from Rovell. Ooh, nice. I like Ooh, that too. Nice. <laughs> it's not them. Uh, yeah. What's his name again? Fion? Yeah. Or not? Okay, Fion. Fion. However, it, you. It could have been Fion. No, that's the guy who was actually no. there, though. Fion was actually yeah. there. He like tried to kill someone at the end of the book, right? He showed back up at the end. It doesn't matter. No, it's, you're not, right. it's, it's not. You're it's right, not. You're him. Right. It's not. Him. I look it up afterwards. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Clue two: This character has killed people. King Iodon. It's not King Iodon. Kaladin. Kaladin? No, it's not Kaladin. Uh, Denth. It's not Denth. Clue three. This character is an antagonist. Tonkfa. It's not Tonkfa. Amaram. It's not Amaram. Dudes who are antagonists who have killed people. I mean, I think I imagine most. Most, <laughs> most of them, most, most of characters, them, probably a lot of them, probably. Shalan's dad, Lin. It's not Lin. Clue four. This character has a powerful ancestor. Sadius. It's not Sadius. <laughs> Man antagonist. <laughs> Yeah. Who has killed people with a powerful ancestor. Yeah. I don't think we have guessed him this time around. So Sane? 
It's not Zane. The citizen? It's not the citizen. I like that. Clue five. Uh, this character was killed by piercing damage. Oh, boy. What an interesting set of clues. Yeah. Yeah. Why is Antagonist the one that's getting me here? <laughs> yes. What? Like how we're all leaning on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the nice. Piercing damage. Yeah. <laughs> what is piercing damage? <laughs> no, like, that, that, that's actually there's, not bludgeoning. There's the obvious answer, and then there's also, or not the obvious answer, but like the obvious. What's the obvious answer? That it was hemallergy. Okay. But then it's like, but is that mm -hmm. a fake out? Hmm. True. If it helps you, I would not have considered that to be the obvious answer. What do you think the obvious answer is to that of Kenny? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think there's an obvious answer, but I'm thinking about bullets. Yeah, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about bullets? Yeah. Piercing. Bullets pierce. I mean, <laughs> for one definition of the word pierce, sure. I would say bullets pierce, for sure. Is there a yeah. definition for which they do not pierce? They go through you yeah. and typically shoot, like, it's like, yeah, sometimes sure. a bullet remains, okay. but they pierce your okay, skin. Okay, this is true. <laughs> like, if you're We're hit by a, a bullet that doesn't pierce your skin, I think you're not having a good time. Yeah, like... <laughs> Oh, he was stabby stabs. Your stabby honor, he was bludgeoned to death by bullets. <laughs> That's when you just get it and just like, yeah, get him. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those big, like Super Mario, like cannonball bullets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I've been, I've been very definitely convinced. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it the guy? I feel like this. No, but that's. Give me, give me the clues again, Eric. Sure. Male uh, antagonist killed people impressive ancestry piercing. Yep. Okay. Yes. Those. Powerful ancestors. Sorry. Yeah. I'm giving up. This isn't an amazing guess, but uh, Tarson or Tarkson, the colossal blooded guy who whacks. It's Tarson. Nope. It's not yeah, Tarson. that guy. Okay. And. <laughs> I'm going to guess this simply for the reason that I th think you could construe him to be an antagonist in Stormlight Archive, uh, Kelsier. It's not Kelsier. Yes, Thadaka, he's sort of. He was, he was pierced. He was pierced, that's true. That's, uh, yeah, that's good. Sure. I like that. I like that. That's good. Uh, I, I think he died from, from a back slap. Yeah, not he died the, from a slap. Yeah. Oh, not the yeah. spear no, no, no. that he, he was didn't... pierced with. No, that is true. That's true. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He did take piercing yeah. damage, but yes. he did. Yeah. He didn't die he from died it. from a snapped neck. That is true. Yeah. I I am I am really struggling with this one. Oh, um, so Sweet. I'm gonna yeah, well I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in uh kind of a throwaway raise. Nope, it's not raise. Uh Katie, you're not gonna like this. It's a different colos flooded person. It's Granite <sighs> Joe from the beginning of Shadows of Self. Who was oh my god! Okay. <laughs> I was thinking after oh. bullets were mentioned, I was like, this has to be like one of their one-off enemies or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. nice. If powerful ancestry is like okay. Yeah, yeah they're colos. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Okay. I then I I, would I don't not like get it. that. Because no, that one's a hard one for sure. I well, not only not only did I not remember Granite Joe, I was also definitely thinking of like they are the, the descendant of a specific powerful individual. Yeah. Was not necessarily that their ancestors are collectively powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you can send your complaints to Bean the Boy Twelve. <laughs> uh, Good job. Good job, Bean. Yeah, and uh, this is this is valid. This is valid. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It is. The, the the words are accepted, but you don't like them. Uh. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's a it's a begrudging type of thing. Like when when okay, the star father accepts Lopens or yeah, no yeah, when, yeah, 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 yeah. And our next one is our who's that cosmic character priority Q. If you are a herald on Patreon uh, at ten dollars a month or higher, you can submit 
some priority queues where we will get to them sooner than what we just did with being the boy 12 which was august 2021 <laughs> nice uh year cool. and a half uh but we we do kind of go through the queue kind of randomly these days so that doesn't mean it'll take two years for years to get read in the regular queue but uh certainly if you want them we will read these so this one is from gray hive uh and clue oh, hey one there. I am not invested yet. Oh, you're doing one of these, aren't you? <sighs> yeah. It's in first person, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The yes in parentheses. Are we speaking in the present day of the Cosmere? Uh, all of the clues are written in present tense. How about that? Okay. So take that how you will. <laughs> I Arden. shall. Okay, great. Uh, Oridan. Oh, it's not Oridan. <laughs> Are you Adolin? It's not Adolin. Can I ask when this was sent in? Sure. Uh, this was sent in... Uh, uh, late November of of, of this 2022. Year. Or, sorry, of, of of last year, <laughs> not this year. <laughs> not okay, yet. I'm I'm <laughs> gonna guess. Episode. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Max. It's not Max. Mm. Clue two. My aunt is heroic. Give me what's what's a gav 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 the child. Uh, are you, are you referring to the son of El Hokar? That that gav? Yeah, gav, Little gav. That guy. Little yeah. Gav. No, it's not him. Dang. Uh I will I will cop out and uh answer uh little little baby Tindwell. It is little baby Tindwell. What? <laughs> it is. <laughs> You chose the wrong kid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Clue <Yeah>. three was <laughs> classic. My aunt is dead. Clue four, I have a oh, traditional right. name. And clue five is I'm under four years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Telson? Yeah, Telson. Telson. Heroic? Ah, no, no Mar 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 Marasi is the heroic aunt, and Telson is the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Has multiple okay. Aunts. yeah, yeah, yeah. The dead one's Telson, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, gotcha. I was I like, know, does, uh, does Telson. Telson considers herself to be heroic. Yeah, I don't think, I, I think would it's Marasi. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I like it. That was a good one. Cool. You're just mm -hmm. bitter. <laughs> I am bitter. This is like so paleo. Close. I was like, which kid do I guess? Yeah, the wrong horse. The wrong, wrong horse, horse yeah. baby. <laughs> the wrong Classic kid. shark cast move. Classic. You've made one of the classic blunders. All right. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find us on 70 chartcom for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever want. We have an awesome, very active Discord server uh, where you can talk about the episodes as always. Uh, can also do that on the forums uh and uh yeah you can find us on facebook twitter soundcloud youtube uh put your comments below if you uh know what a polymorphism is put the put the put it down below what does that mean uh i'm sure i had some other call to actions in this but i don't remember them now but uh put put your comments below on souls <laughs> Just generally you know, how do you feel Cosmere about souls. souls? Cosmere souls. Cosmere souls. And if you do know polymorphism, just says uh, your your favorite type. Of yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so we will not have an episode in two weeks. We will have one three weeks from now. Sorry, uh, but you will get a sweet group shot of of uh, the all the charters at the wedding because. Uh, like half the weddings charters. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everybody's yeah. gonna look so snazzy. Yeah, we're gonna look snazzy. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, I'm very pleased. Yeah. Uh, so it's gonna be good. So, uh, yeah, more wobs next time. So see you all later.
Bye. Peace. Bye. Ka.